Okay. I'm still I'm still not finding the match. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm still we're Hey folks, this is Rory Pascar here with Mr. Marty Store. We are uh, streaming the um, final match, or about to be start streaming the final match of the what's this? Uh, the uh, Masters final between Joe Russell and Alex Toth. Uh, we're waiting for them to get started. It should happen momentarily. Let's see here. It is a 13-point match. Uh, once again, this is the Masters final. This will be followed directly by the uh, main final, the championship division final between um, uh, Tim Cross and Tim Cross and uh, Boris Dektier. And the commentary will have dual commentary with um, Ray Fogerland and Chris Trencher for that match. Um, I might pop in and help out Marty a little bit, but for the most part, he's going to be flying solo. I think he can handle it. He's a big boy. Uh, how you doing, Mr. Marty Sora? How are you? Oh, fine. Thank you, Rory. I'm, uh, good, good job on all the streaming and everything. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate you for adding help. some chat commentary throughout the weekend. I appreciate that. Yeah. So, um, so I don't know much about Alex as a player. I think I've, I've watched maybe one of his matches and he played well in that match. I he know, is, I know a lot about Joe. Of course. Somewhat of a newer player, Alex. He, uh, I think he's been playing. I think he's from the Northwest. Uh, he plays in my, some of my, uh, weekly, uh, Chicago open series tournaments. And, uh, um, seems like a very nice guy. I've had a few nice conversations with him, you know, outside of actual, you know, playing in the tournament. And, uh, yeah, seems like a nice guy. He plays quite well. Uh, his play has definitely improved somewhat in the last four months during COVID. Uh, you know, he was originally playing maybe at a, a slightly above open level play player level, and now I think he's playing well, uh, a decent amount below. I think he's been studying a lot. He's been playing a lot and uh, had some decent successes, and now he's in the uh, a Masters final. Congratulations to you, Alex. Nice to see uh, people improve and uh, show steady improvement and uh, get success from that. Uh, Joe Russell, man, that guy's been around for a long time, winning in a lot of tournaments. Um, he's, uh, you know, obviously one of the all-time greats. Uh, I believe he's a Hall of Famer. Is that am I mistaken? Yes, he, he's in the Hall of Fame. Yep. Um, I forget what year. Yeah. Uh, not, it was at, le at least um, the third time back. Uh, you know, he's, he's won a lot of uh, tournaments, uh, world championship in 1989. Yep. Uh, oh yeah. He's a one time world champion. He, and he lost, in, he lost in the final just a few years ago. Right. Yeah. yeah in 16, he, he lost to, um, Jerry Granville. The three time world champion. No, no, it wasn't Jerry. It was Jerry Granville. No. no it wasn't Jerry. Yeah. It was, uh, it was, uh, it was, um, it was, um who was it again? Um, Jorgen. Right. Oh, yeah, oh, Jorgen Gronstadt. That's right. Yeah. So. So that made that made Jorgen, Jorgen a, a two. A, a, what is he? A three-time winner? A two-time winner? Uh, I think he's a three-time world champion. I'm gonna go silent for a second. Hey, Marty. I'm gonna go silent for a second. I'll be right back. Yeah. All right. So I'm still waiting for the match to be started. So this this commentary is uh, going to be five minutes in advance of the stream. So if you're watching on the stream, you know you won't hear this commentary. Uh, I mean, you're, if you're watching just the, just the USPGF broadcast channel stream match, I mean, that's going to be five minutes uh, delayed from this commentary. Still waiting for the match to start, I think. Okay.
Joe Russell made a fantastic play in that. What do you call it? I was trying to get back. Okay, I guess they're going to start in a moment. Uh, here we go. All right. Okay. My sounds off. How do you do that? Uh, okay. All right. Burger. Oh, the burger. Okay. Uh, all right, my sounds are off. Okay, good. Right. Okay, so off off we go. It went five, it went f um, five four four. I, I suppose that's Alex, right? That's Alex is playing white. He he opened uh, with with two down. Um, so that's a, the old style aggressive building play, and Joe Russell replied with uh, double sixes, may, maybe the best reply other than double fours, and now. Alex makes his five point. There are two priorities. One is to get an advanced anchor, the other is to build your board against an early double six by the opponent. And now Joe has um, made his four point with a four two, threatening to cube, but Alex has come back with double fours, anchoring up with a 20 point. Now it's just a mutual holding game, but now um, after the exchange of double fives and two one, He's 20 pips, is this what, what, 17 pips ahead, which would be a double and uh, I believe it was in take range for, uh, for Alex, but it's not the happiest of takes. I predict he takes, I predict that he, yes, he did. Okay, so six, five, Joe just starts to clear, you know, strip his midpoint to prepare to clear it. Um, double threes, good roll for uh, for Alex. He can and and you know plays as good as long as he keeps his midpoint, makes his two and slots his three, five four. He's just gonna he's not gonna volunteer a shot. He's just gonna play flexibly and keep some spares. Five three. Alex will just simply make his three point for the eleven. Four two probably just uh, seven to one. Yeah. And double threes. Now it's. I don't believe it's worth uh, breaking the board. He might. He can play thirteen four, eight five, or he can just play. You know, a momentary pressure on the midpoint. That doesn't. It's not worth very much though. And now Joe is just going to clear his points. And now it's just. You know, I didn't think he should make his make his ace point with a six four. There's no rush to. Uh, to run or anything like that. And now it doesn't matter too much. He should probably, Joe should now probably just strip his seven point. There's there's some you said for seven to four, two to one, trying to attack in some variations if Alex runs one checker from his 20 point run. That's what he did. And uh, the, the, you know, now, now it's getting, it's getting to where uh, Alex could, he didn't didn't want to waste racing pips by going dead to two, so he he just left one one checker behind, and now it's proved a hindrance because now Joe can't clear his eight point. He's going to have to choose. He's going to play seven to one and choose between six to three, which I predict he'll do, and seven to one and four to one. I think he, he, he just he doesn't want to stack on the ace point for racing purposes, but he's well ahead in the race. But you know, there's there's no there's never any guarantee. So I predict he just you know Alice is going to play ten to five, twelve to nine. Yep. And Joe is going to decide which to clear. He just makes a standard clear from the back play. He is still well ahead in the race, and I predict Al. Okay, so that that three to two was a little dubious, maybe. Five to four was a little better for racing, but now uh, it's it's shot time. He rolled a six two, the only blot number, and now the four one comes in handy. I suppose he's going to stay put, and he keeps his board, hoping for a six five. Now he just is going to bear bearing off the. Uh, he played the 
made the best play for racing, keeping a six point stripped. Uh, it's Stayed back for the shot, probably right. He's hardly ever going to win the race. Now he just is just going to lose two points. And uh, Joe Russell is going to be up uh, in the 13 win match to Zep, barring major disasters here. This is Marty Storr. This is a 13 point match final in the Masters of the Sunny Florida. And that's Jen. So we'll start. We'll start out um, the second game with Joe leading to zero. So one school of thought says, "Oh, if you're ahead in the match, you you split instead of building." But Joe wants to complicate things. He doesn't. This is his preferred play in general, I think. And the split, the split with the ace is actually incorrect, according to XG. You, you know, it's, with, with all the duplicated fours, uh, uh, that you know, white, white there should have should have slotted the five point instead of splitting. And Joe just made, I think that's the standard play. He can't really make his five point and the twenty one. Those are really direct shots. He doesn't want to do that. Alex makes his five point. Joe makes his three, and now Alex has rolled a nice 6-5 to make the 18 point. So now it looks it's shaping up to be another another holding game. Uh, now this is an interesting 2-1. One. one school of thought says you just don't leave any direct shots. Another says, well, you keep pressure on the bar point with 13-10 or 13-11, so, 10-9. And it's a close pip count, so... Uh, being hit is potentially very bad, so Joe just lifted his loss to the eight point. It's a little, it's going to pay a price, maybe in flexibility, but that the direct shot was is big. So, you know, just, just a mutual holding game here uh, with a close pip count. Um, Alex probably just going to play eight to two, staying flexible. And Joe Russell is going to choose between eight to one and eight to three, eight to six. And he chooses not to leave the second blot on his board and odd on the end outside. Alex stays flexible, um, strips his midpoint and slots his three. And now Joe just makes his two point twice. He's got a four point board. Alex is coming down to he was six pips beyond. Now he's rolled a six five. Now he can he can play safe. Put two blots in his board. Uh, he can make two inner board points, but he, but leaving thirteen a thirteen number shot is very risky. So it's he has to choose between the immediate risk and the. Uh, Good effect of the four point board when he's missed. I suppose he should play safe. Which he does. And now this isn't the greatest three one, but Joe's probably just going to play either eight to five, two to one, or eight to four rather than break a point in his board or break his anchor. I, I predict he'll make one of those plays. So he slots the four point. It's interesting. Uh, better for the race to have the four point slotted. But it was more flexible for making a point next turn if he if he went two to one uh, and slot at one point. And now it's a that's a good roll for Joe. He can make his four point. So, and now uh, Alex is um, she's coming down to it. So it's you know you know he could he could play 13, six, 16 number shot, which is huge. It's a somewhat gamish sixteen number shot as well. So I predict he'll. He'll, he'll just play safe and wait for uh, Joe to come to him. He could just break his six point. Um, the the good part about break uh, the good part about play, taking a risk now is that you know you don't you don't play awkwardly you don't lose your four point board. Unfortunately, he's hit. Um, he hits and, and now he got notice that Joe alertly got off the double one return shot with twenty one eighteen. That also crosses a quadrant, which is important. So. Now the cube is in play, but 
uh, the, the pip count is close and uh, both sides have good 5.4 acres. Now, Alex must just break his five point, it looks like, and keep a five point board, which he does. And now Joe is a little bit ahead. He's got a little bit of a timing squeeze on him, on Alex. He's thinking about doubling, which is proper. Every, every move is a cube decision. If it, it looks like a reasonably good double to me, uh, because yeah, because uh, Alex is under timing pressure, then there's always a chance he might make the wrong decision. Um, whatever that <clears throat> is, if he, if uh, Joe doesn't leave an outside blot and get hit, which is a low, a low probability thing. Let's see, what are those numbers? He's got a three, what three one and double five, double five switches points at least. So this is a good double from Joe, and Alex is taking his time over it. And he gives up, which is reasonable. I'm not sure what I would have done. That under underscores what a good double it was by Joe. So, so Alex opens with three one, making his five point, and Joe replies with a six two. You want to, you know, you're. Obviously, you can't slot your five point. That's that would be really bad. That this, you know, you, you know, your partner would already have a good lead in development, and your. So what what uh, what you're trying to do is uh, counter by making an anchor instead of trying to catch up in development, where his partner already had a lead, and he's ended up with an advanced anchor. It's a four point prime. He's just <clears throat> pointed on his five point. But now again, uh, Alex makes an anchor. So it's sort of a mutual holding game. Uh, Joe, Joe leads in pips. So that, that makes him think, of, think about running at least. The all, other alternatives being safe 13 to five and uh, you know, semi-safe 13, eight, six, three. And he's decided to play safe. Um, was was a bit risky. He did have a lot of territory to traverse with a, a lone back checker if he did elect to run. And you know you should be you know wary of breaking your your anchor because he would have had to run and then run again and not get hit and it was a long parlay. The drawback, of course, is that um, you know he does he remains with two checkers stuck back there and he's not blocking very well against Alex now. What he did was he hit and he uh, slotted his three point that duplicated threes to hit from the bar and for from an 18, but he got hit twice and now the cube is coming. And uh, if it's a take, it's not a happy take by Joe. Blow, Joe is ahead three zero. It's a small factor, um, but Joe Joe took. He said that you know there's enough game left. Says I have four checkers back. Alex has three checkers back, and uh, you know he's Joe, Joe's got faith in his ability to handle positions like this. And Alex uh, switches forward. He switches to the eighteen anchor, which I believe he did right. Joe pops out to, with a six three. Um, now notice that before the double fives, Alex was fourteen pips ahead. Now he's going to be a, a huge amount ahead. So he should just clear his 18 and uh, clear the blot to his six point, leaving Joe Russell with a holding game <clears throat> with a trailing checker on the 24 point. And what he will then, I believe he's, you know, he, he must he must be thinking about pointing on the one point, but he decides not to do that. So this is interesting. Now Joe has a choice of leaving that check on the 16 point or pushing the 15 or just safetying it. Um, he, if he leaves it there, it would be in favor of making his four point for a, you know, you know which is, but, but he says, no, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stay back. The, 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 you know, one, I, one idea of leaving it out there would be to, you know, 
know, if he rolls some joker like double fours, he gets hit and he might make a second anchor. But Joe's content to play the holding game with the trailer. The drawback is that he's, you know, he's behind in the race and everything. And uh, he didn't get his board made quickly enough. But it wasn't, it, he might have been correct because it wasn't the case that if he didn't make the four point immediately, he couldn't have made it pretty soon. He didn't make it. No, I think it's this is just thirteen to nine four times is what I think is best. Alex is simply trying to clear his checkers home safely, and so this is this is sort of counterproductive. It's it makes a, a landing point inside, but it's not very compact, and so if you don't have your checkers more in like one bunch. With, that's what I mean by compact. Then you you know you're risking some things. Now now luckily he for for Alex he can he can simply clear his eleven point and leave a seventeen to one shot. Um, Joe is still back there with that trailer. Now those two checkers on the two point th those are landing. That's a landing spot. That two point for checkers coming in. But Again, it's not the most compact of positions. You might prefer, you would have preferred to make the three point. And the lack of spares means he has some lack of flexibility. With this 4 1, he'll just, he'll just improve the position of his builders. And now Joe has got to go with one checker at least. He's got to break that anchor, but then he's still going to be behind in the race by 13 after playing. He just says, I don't want to get attacked and gammoned. I'll bring them both out. And now, uh, Alex probably just should, should make the one point and leave a 17 to one shot, four, three. If he, if he gets a close out, he might win a gammon. Not that likely, but but possible. Uh, Joe's gonna come in on the, on the 22 point and stay there and think about his ace. And he, he makes a five point prime. I don't think it's going to matter much. And there's a blot number. There's it now. now uh, Alex has left a direct shot. He must make the four point and with three checkers and hit on the three. And he's got some little hope of a gammon if uh, Joe misses the return shot. But, but if Joe hits the direct shot, he's he's looking at a win. And there he goes. He hits and he's going to believe he should just come out. And one six leaves a blot. Now I think this is a good a good double. You know, he, does, he doesn't want to risk uh, letting uh, miss, missing the shot and then letting Alice get to the edge. So it takes a 5-0 lead to 13. So he ought to be upward in the 70% of winning chances if you use the match equity table. So 3-2 is a... That is XG's preferred reply with 3 2 to opening 6 1 instead of coming up to the uh, 21 point. Now, the 22 anchor is an underrated anchor against a formation like White has three, you know, five on the six that have made the bar with a 6 1 and a stripped outfield, stripped seven and eight points. The 22 anchor is a good, a good anchor. Now, that is probably the best 4 1 that Alex could have played, simply adding a builder to the eight point. And Joe makes his bar, and Alex rolls six four. Now he simply runs. The alternative is to make the two point, which is a little deep. Does nothing about the problem with the back checkers. And Joe hits twice with a five two. I think it was and now in with a four two double ones for Joe. And Joe can simply point on the four point, be consistent with the previous play. Same idea as to attack, or he could say, all right, I'll make, I'll make a broken five point prime and push my back checker 22 to 21. Don't think anything else is to be considered. So it'll be interesting to see how Joe plays this. He could he could also make the twenty two point and the, and the five point I suppose. But no, he decides to make the broken five prime. 
Um, it was it was probably pretty good just to 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 attack as well, but I guess he wants to play a little conservatively now that he's ahead of the match. But the the trouble is that the the ace point checker is that Joe has is not that good for blocking. So he just got pointed on with a double four, I guess, and he came into a five two. And what is the best play for Alex? He hits twice. That's a, you know, it's, 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 for, it's risky because he gets a third checker back behind that broken prime. And now he's got a decision. Does he keep hitting and risk multiple, multiple, multiple checkers back? Or do he just say, all right, I'm done attacking and I'll make a, I'll make the 21 anchor. But I think he's running out of ammo. So he makes the 21 anchor reasonable decision, close pip count. He may still be able to attack to some degree. There's a 3-1. I believe he should make a four-point board, 7-3. to three. Damn the torpedoes. Blue has still got a checker on the ace point to worry about if he does get hit. He could say, oh, I want to keep the bar point and play something like 13-9, to nine, but I think that four-point board right away puts maximum pressure, and I think he can't afford to play slowly. So we'll see what he does. Yeah, he does it. Uh, and now, <laughs> now Joe can simply put a fourth checker back, which he does. And oh, this is a bad, bad reply for Alex staying on the roof. Now at the score, will he, does he want to double at the score? It's a little, it looks like white has got a lot of game. And uh, a redouble would be really, really good. If, if White could get in a redouble, he'd be very happy. Now, I suppose Joe should simply uh, attack, make the hit and make the one point. It's not 100% clear, but he does do it. And now, oh, now there's two checkers, two checkers in. <laughs> so, so this is, and, and now I, I guess Joe has got to lift two checkers, a seven point to six and 18 to 13. I don't think he wants to fiddly diddle with hitting two checkers and leaving uh, one, two, three, four, five blocks. Little known rule, the Schwarzot rule is never leave more than four blocks. I predict he leaves one block. There's an in, in between place, hit one checker on the deuce point and lift. But I think he just wants to, he wants to play safe. You know, if he gets hit with a, a deuce or six five or, or five five, then all right. You know, he's about a two to one favorite not to be hit immediately if he plays safe. But he's looking at, uh, he's looking at everything as he should, and he does play safe in the end. Alex misses, but he, uh, he anchors on the 22. He's thinking about it, but I don't think there's any question that he should anchor on the 22. That's a bastion of, of something. It's not the most perfect ambush, but since Joe has got two checkers on his ace point, the double anchor gains a bit of power. Now I, I think Alex should just break the midpoint and not, rather than bury a checker. 13 7 9 8 or, or even 13 6. I don't think uh, breaking one of the anchors is very good. He's way behind the race. And I don't think 9 to 2 is very good either. So you want you want if you're if you're playing a, a, a dubious uh, anchor now okay so now he's saying I'm gonna I'm gonna make both the five and six points as quickly as I can. It might have been a try trying to tempt Joe to double him. The trouble with this play is that if he gets immediate contact, he might not be able to, if he gets hit, for example, he may not be able to come back and make the point, but his plan works. I think he should simply make the five and six points right away. So he, <clears throat> the old double slot to make the two points as quickly as possible play has worked out. And Joe says, I'm gonna clear my point while I can. And Alex says, I'm gonna make my 18 point while I can. I believe that's what we'll do. 
he could make his 18 or he could make his 15 or he could go all the way to the ace point and just say, all right, I'll, I'll break later if at all. But he does what most players would have done is he advances his anchor. He says, all right, I've got some time still. And maybe, maybe I can break something later if I need to. I think he'll simply go seven to one here. I think it's too risky to break his 22 anchor or his, or the 18 anchor. Breaking the 18 anchor is an idea. So 18 to 13 to 76. <clears throat> but he decides he will not do that. And now, now fives are not the greatest for uh, for Joe. Notice that Joe's keeping the cue in the middle. Cube in the middle. He does not volunteer. He says, "All right, you're you're stripped too, buddy. So I'm going to let you come to me." And unfortunately for Alex, he's rolled a six. Now, if he if he says, "I'm going to." break the 18 point and stay back for the long-term shot equity. That's that may be his best play actually. You know, it would, so he, he sort of, he, he does that. That's a, it's probably right. Joe can consider double, but again, he does not double do the score, but he does, he does hit. And now he's got um, four, three, four, four back fan. And, uh, now, now Joe goes for the double, and <clears throat> is it good enough for a desperation take? He's way behind. He's 40 pips behind, and he decides that I, my shot equity, being on the bar, probably right to just drop. He doesn't want to get gammoned, and gammoned for four. Or I mean, He had a five-point board, but he did have a blot on the five-point board, and that means if he hit, he could be hit back and still lose. So now 6-4 for Joe, opening with a standard for him, uh, aggressive uh, splitting play. And the 3-2 is the standard, well, it's not, is it not as a standard? It's not, it's not standard, stand, more standard would be splitting to the 21. But splitting to the 22 is not bad. But you, you know, down, a down and split play is, is really the idea. I mean, he, you know, Alex could even hit loose on the ace point. That was, a, that was an old style play. But it gains value when the split by the first player has been to the nine point. Nine point builder is really good. So you either want to challenge the nine point builder by splitting to the either to the 21 or 22, bring a builder down to your outfield, or by hitting loose to gain a tempo so you can't, uh, so opponent cannot use that nine point builder. And that was a 6 2. That was a 6 2 for. <clears throat> Joe and he decided to hit twice. I have not seen that play. I'm suspicious of that Joe's double hit play because he could have played. Um, he could have made either the bar point. He could have made made the 18 point and then uh, 13 11. Or he could have just said, "All right, hit me if you dare. I'm just going to." make my seven point. But he decided to hit twice. I guess he was trying to just gain a tempo and protect his back checkers. And uh, at the score, he probably wants, he's probably giving high value to an advanced anchor. He could have made the advanced anchor with a six outright. But it's worked out. He's whipped up a mini attack and he's kept, kept Alex bouncing. Alex now has a six two. He's just going to make his bar and decide on the. That's a. I like the play. I like. I like uh, six to four in positions like this when you're behind in the match. Well, this is interesting. I suppose Joe should just make his three point. <clears throat> if you, if you, the the timing would not be great for a bat game. Even if he hits on the, uh, he could hit twice. He could hit on the. He says, "I'll hit twice. I won't risk." You know. Him entering and then getting a decent low anchor game. But Alex has come right back with a double five and he's hit outside. Instead of playing games with all make all key points and, and all that stuff. Well, Joe's got a bunch of blots, and Alex has got the defense of a twenty three point anchor. He says, "I'll I'll mix things up." Even this, you know, despite the fact that Joe has got a three point board because Alex has got some chance to 
to block, you know, he's got some chance to make, use the builder on the 10 point to make an inside point or to just to cover that 10 point. Now with six, five, I suppose just a pure play moving out to the, to, you know, 20 to 14 and then slotting a five point. You can't, you can't do too much with that six, five, so I might as well put checkers where you want them and at least slotting a five duplicates an ace to cover. Ooh, a double five. Now that can be either a hit and cover, which looks very attractive. Just hit on the 11, cover the three from the midpoint. And then if your opponent fans, you're sitting very pretty. And um, nope, he's in. He's in with a 5-2. Not the best, not the best reply. It's going to be risky whatever Alex decides to do. The safest play, oh, now he's okay. He says, all right, come and get me. <clears throat> and Joe says, all right. He doesn't know whether he should double, so he just says, all right, I'll, now he's going to go for the cannon. Cover the five point. And it looks like he's probably going to get that cannon. Coming in is good. Double three is bad. Can't move his back checker at all. He can't have that checker pop out. So just going to go two checkers to the deuce point. <clears throat> I think that's better than going four to one. You know, spare position compactness is where he does go four to one. Trouble with going four to one. What trouble is there? I'm not sure. Um, yeah, five four. I guess five four is bad anyway. It's just a worse position of spares for later. So Alex is fanned and now Joe is considering uh, whether to play for Gammon or whether to, to keep going. And then he's got a bad, a bad five four. <clears throat> I guess anything is bad that doesn't move the back checker. But, you know, then again, he can hit. Now he says, all right, I'm just gonna get to six away. And, the heck with it. It's very tempting to play on, but he's got significant losing chances, even from the, well, this may win even from that 23 anchor. So Joe is up, up seven to zero to 13. That's a hell of a score to uh, come back from, but Alex, of course, is not giving up. He, he splits and Joe makes the 20 anchor and the nine point and Alex comes around to make the 11 point to block Joe's anchor. Now double fives, he attacks. Now he could have <clears throat> simply simply run, but I guess he didn't like his, so he thought that anchor still has some value. He could uh, he could go for an attack. But that, that has not worked out too well because uh, this is Alex I'm talking about. Alex could have could have come, but Alex is going to mix it up. Alex is white, Joe is blue. Apologies if I create confusion there. Now Joe is blocking. Um, Joe is blocking that anchor, <clears throat> and he's a, he's a, going to be seven pips behind after moving, so he's going to think about. He might be thinking about making a nine point leaving direct ace shot. I think that's the wrong idea because the outside prime is not necessarily that valuable. He plays safe. <clears throat> that six to four is, you know, preserves a spare six outside. So it might have been right. It's it's uh, suspicious though, a little suspicious to go six to four, making a dilly builder there. Now he says, all right, with three blots on the board, I'll make that bar point. He's right to do that. And almost anyone hits and covers something. Any, anyone does hit and cover something, but then Joe would have a shot. And, and uh, if missed, then Alex would have a five broken five point to leap. <clears throat> so double four makes the pip count close. For Joe Russell, uh, 
going to be down a couple of pips after moving, and he's thinking, well, where do I, where the heck do I move this silly thing? It could make the 3.3 times. It could make the 2.0 twice. Making the three point just says, all right, I'm going to block the higher numbers that Alex has to escape from the 20 anchor, not give them a double five, let's say, but still give them a double four, which would head and cover two checkers. I guess you can't do anything about that anyway. <clears throat> and making the two point would say, all right, I'll keep more spare checkers outside. Spare on the 11. And now Joe says, all right, I'm going to, I'm just going to play a hybrid game. I'm going to, he's going to break his 11 clear from the back. And uh, hope to out time, hope to out time him. I'm, uh, I'm really not sure. I think I, yeah, uh, it's hard to, these are tough, tough plays to Dale. I, I might have made the 3.3 times. I, I'm really, not at all sure of the right play in that position. Now it's proceeding a pace, and now uh, Alex has rolled a couple of five threes, and he he has had to move his back checker, and now his board is starting to break. I think he should just save a five by switching his two point, which he does. <clears throat> now Joe gets a very nice double four. Question is how to play it. He could bring four checkers in, or he could make his two point from the ten point and say, all right, if you run, then I will attack you. And if you can't even run with that double three, and so he's wasting, he's wasted a whole bunch of pips. And one could take a Keith count. He says, I'm not doubling at seven zero. I might, says I might, might double now. What is the Keith count? 68 and 77. He's got a few good little numbers to attack. Yeah, so it looks a little dicey to take this one. Six two is a blot number. He does take. He says, I'm not afraid of you. The combinations of twos and ones were excellent for Joe. That's a that's a fat that's a racing factor right there. So <clears throat> now I, I suppose Joe should just take off two checkers, but he might he might want to take off four because one thing is opponent may have to run anyway, and even if he does get hit, which looks like sixty six twelve ninety six, which is a five percent. Then uh, the win is not guaranteed. So Joe might have been right just to rip the checkers off playing against the big doubles parlay. I'd have to put on my thinking cap to try to figure out the exact probabilities. But Joe discovered another two points. I think maybe that was a pass <clears throat> for uh, for Alex. But when you're way behind, you get you get sick of giving the opponent a point, a point, a point. So. And sometimes you're right not to give the opponent a point, a point, a point. Sometimes you have to make a stand, but that looked like a... And, you know, there was a variation where the gap on the five-point hurt Joe, you know. He had a gap bearing in, he might not have filled it, and then, you know, some some doubles might, might have been sufficient for, for Alex. So, okay. Now Joe is held, he needs four. And uh, Alex Toth needs 13. So now Joe is saying, all right, I could really mix things up by hitting on the 14 point, or I could make a hybrid play. I guess the hybrid play would be split to the 18 and then make the, make the seven. <clears throat> and then there would be a super safe play, which would be to make the seven with two checkers, the midpoint and the 11 point, and say, all right, Opponent is not favored to make some good point immediately, and I can run later. But he, he says, "All right, I'll mix things up. I'll head outside." He hasn't 
hurt me yet. Even if I get hit back, it's not the end of the world. And there's a beautiful double ace. And I think he should just leave leave the blots on the seven and eight points and make the five, which is what he does. He's got a, you know, if blot in contest is going to favor Joe Russell with blue because he's got a stronger leaderboard. And now he's got to decide where to hit back. I'll hit back on the 18 point like he does there. Opponent's bar. He's got communication with the back checkers to the 18 point that way. And Joe hits back with a 2 1. And Alex hits on the 11 point. Now, this is interesting a 4 1. He can hit loose on the 3 or he can make the 7. He chooses to make the solid three point prime against the three back checkers. <clears throat> hoping the result will not make some good point. Made a pretty good point, the three point. Now Joe is going to play as purely as possible. He's going to slot his eight point and make the 23 anchor instead of settling for three checkers on the 24, which is a bad formation. Alex makes the four point. Now Alex is in doubling territory already. Whatever Joe does, I believe I would, I would double this and see if Joe is brave enough to take it. And Joe says, I'm brave. I'll even leave my eight point slotted. And this is, yeah, a mandatory double of the score. Maybe even, maybe even zero, zero to 13. And Joe says, all right, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take my chances in a game like this. If he says to himself, if I'm gonna lose this match, it starts with getting gammoned here and losing four. So quite a good decision, I think, to give that up. Now, now Joe splits with a 6-2 and Alex makes a standard reply with 4-2. It used to be thought that um, making the four or hitting on the seven were both equal, but now we think hitting on the seven is better. And I believe it's better when you're behind in the match to mix things up. Joe replied with a beautiful double twos and all Alex should do is make his bar point. Well, at least he's got a bar point. Joe is gonna make his seven, I think think maybe he would run if it were one back checker left. Oh no, sorry, it was, Al it was Alex on roll. Um, Joe made his three point on Alex roll six four point or not. Sorry about that. And now, suppose Alex is going to hit, play against two back checkers, hope not to be hit back or the like. He could make his five point, the trouble with make his five point is he's, he, you know, he's, he's got 10 in the zone, but yeah, well. I, I still think I would have hit that thing. You know, Joe's got an advantage against two back checkers. The race is still close. <coughs> the five point is nice to have, admittedly for Alex. Joe has a tough choice. Uh, he could safety from the 16 and leave two blots in the outfield, 11 to 10. Doesn't like to leave two blots, but he but creating a builder is not a bad thing. Creating an extra builder, leaving no direct shot. So he's thinking hard about this one. He could make the bar and go 16 to 14. So he says, no direct shots for you. And now 3-1 for Alex. I believe he's got a split with that one. He can't just sit back and let Joe Russell prime him in. And he says, all right, and, and I'm going to make another builder instead of safety by, by moving into the five point or 13 to 10. And now Joe, Joe's eight point because Alex made a nice split to the 23 point, Joe's eight point was not free to build without leaving shots. And now Joe rolled a three one and he simply made his 10 point twice and cleaned up the outside. And Alex is extending his blockade, making his three point. And now Joe, I believe is just gonna play safe. Moving to the four point and the eight point safely should Alex double because of the score. Not sure. I'm not sure. And what should he do now? 
it's it's tough. It's uh, you could just run, and he says, "All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna come and get you." And Joe's got to just make his bar point, and th this is the only play that's going to give him a take. Even if it is a take, I'm not even sure it's a take at the score, but certainly he's got a double. I mean. And he does. And Joe's got, you know, he's got some several winning chances, but he, when things go wrong, he'll get gammed a lot. And he's got to weigh the, weigh all the, all the odds here. One checker back versus two, but he's got two vulnerable blots. He's got a weaker bore. He's got a broken five prime. This would be a good one to think long about. And Joe has got three, a little less than three and a half minutes left on his clock. They're playing the normal, the normal backhand galaxy time control. Which, and now he says, all right, I'm taking. And now Alex, you know, he's got a difficult choice here. He can make the solid six prime. We can hit loose and say, all right, you, if you, while you stay on the bar, I'm going to slither up to the 20 point and attack. But he says, no, I'll just, uh, what I'll do instead is I'll make the, I'll make the six prime and then sort of see what you're going to do about it. And Joe's, you know, he's already got a tough choice with a five, two. Six primes are strong. That's an axiom. And Joe said, I'll leave fewest shots. I'll make a, I'll, I'll do something there. Now he's, he's got to think about, you know, I think he should hit actually. And having hit, what should he do? He makes the, he says, I'll make the bar. That wasn't the clearest decision in the world. He could have also aimed at his five point builder. And now he's now double six is a bad shot. He could just say, all right, I don't want to be gammoned. I'm just going to play safe versus going for really low probability variations where uh, he's, Alice comes in quickly and then breaks his prime. So instead, Joe Russell is saying, all right, I'm going to try to uh, clear points and not have a second checker hit. And this is an interesting play. He, he did not uh, come in. Uh, he said, I'm going to clear my six point quickly if I can. I think he was probably right. You know, he, he, he did not kill a six thereby. And that was interesting. He didn't want to give himself a five, three, four, three. Six three, but in the long term it might have been, he might have been done better to strip his uh, four point. I'm not really sure. Now he's unfortunately he's <laughs> he is um, Joe has not been able to lift that blot. He left it like three times in a row by rolling high numbers. I think now uh, Alex would just hit loose on the one point, going for that going for that gammon. You know he's got he's, that, that winning four points is going to be a lot better than winning two. And he should be somewhat careful how he plays these numbers. I don't think he's made any big mistake. And now, now he's got he's forced to just cover and leave. I don't think he should. I don't think he should leave the one point slot and bring all his checkers in. I don't think so. But <coughs> it's, it would be a sporting a sporting try for the gam and you know leave the one point slotted, bring all the outside checkers in, and then. Hope he doesn't hit with a, you know, he, okay, so he does, he says, all right, heck with it, I'm just going to play totally safe. I think he's right to do so. <clears throat> now he says, I'm just going to win the, I'm just going to win like a gentleman, probably going to clear a six point safest. And if he, he can still get an undeserved gammon, as they call it, you know, low probability, gammon with one on the roof. 
No, Joe's in now. <clears throat> Chance of Gamma's negligible. It's very negligible. You should play two to one. Yep. No gamut anymore. He would have had to roll two two ones in a row. Well, white got a good double. So <clears throat> nine to three for Joe to thirteen. This is Marty Storer coming to you with the commentary of the final match in the Masters Division of the Sunny Florida ABT Online Tournament. Produced by Karen Davis, Rory Pascar, uh, Ben Friesen, and Kerry Hardy, and all the folks at USBGF. So now a, a split with a 6 3, a hit with a 2 1, and now Joe has played very, in a very nice play, making a four point and building rather than uh, just hitting on the 18 point. Because while Alex is occupied trying to cover or, or otherwise do something good, um, it, it, th then Joe would be free to build. Now Alex rolled a six four hitting, and now this is a the an L and Joe fanned with a double six apparently. Yeah, okay, I missed that part, and uh, it went double by by Alex Toth. That's a quite reasonable at the score. He might attack. He might just <clears throat> start blocking. 3-1, probably should just make his five, I just make that five point, you know. But instead he says, all right, I'm going to just play conservatively. It's not, not the worst idea to play conservatively, I guess. Say, all right, if you miss me, then I can just be ahead of the race and play against the three back checkers, hopefully make the eight point or some other good point. But you know, it's it's a good idea also to mix things up when you're behind because you know your opponent, but you know, put more pressure on your opponent might might make some errors. Joe Russell's an old hand; he's not gonna, you can't count on him making some errors. But but every, even the strongest players will make the occasional mistake. <clears throat> now Alex has got a double four, and I think he should just make the five point. That's the human play. The inhuman play, or I don't know what who would make a, you know, he could he could double hit, he could play you know thirteen to five to one, but he just says I'm gonna I'm gonna I like that five point. The decision that has paid off is Joe Russell rolls a bad reply. He does not anchor on the uh, twenty one point. Now a six three, an interesting choice. He can he just says all right, I'm gonna hit. I'm going to hit more checkers. <clears throat> he had a, an interesting play was to uh, make the eight point from the 11 point and go into the five point, you know, and minimize the chances of good numbers like this. Now, this is a good number from, from Alex. So my instinct is to hit both lots in the board, six to four to three. Oh, this is, oh, this is good too. He switched from his five point. But the trouble with that is he's, you know, he's he's giving up the five point in favor of the four point. He's got a stack on the six point, but now he's made the five point, and now Joe is excellent comeback with five four. He he hits outside, <clears throat> which is there's no no question he had to do that. He's his timing for back game was just just not good. He's just just keeping that twenty two anchor, the double anchors would have been. Very dicey. Now he's got to. Alex has got to think about what to do. Now he's got a. He's got an interesting play. A couple of interesting plays. He just make the nine point. Come in with the two. Switch the nine point from the eleven point, and then probably just go thirteen to eleven, making a broken five point. And the alternative would be to switch points from the five point to the three point. And <clears throat> find a last two. Um, I'm sort of inclined to make the nine point. But he switches. He says, all right, I'm going. And now, and now Joe Russell's fan. The 
Alex has weakened his structure, but that may not matter too much. I suppose now, okay, he could have, he comes out, but he could have also stopped on the 22 point and added a builder with seven. I'm not sure what was right. And Joe hits loose. He said, I'm not going to let you have a free hand to safety and make points and all that good stuff. So he hit loose on his two point with a four, hoping that Alex would stay on the bar or roll something bad. But of course, he had a lot of good numbers. If he most most are good if he comes in. The worst being out of one, I don't know, one five or something of coming numbers. But now, uh, what just happened? Alex hit back, and Joe, I guess Joe fanned, and now a six four. Now Alex, there he goes. Alex is hitting. Says, "I'm not going to let you have a double anchor." Joe hits back. Now will Alex repeat the stratagem of hitting loose on the two point? Probably not. Then what should he play? He could come out to the 18 point. Or he, which he does, he doesn't want to get semi blocked and Joe's obligingly stayed on the bar. Now Alex has an interest, another interesting choice. He can, uh, he can hit loose. Just trying to deny Joe the double anchor. Risky proposition. A third of the numbers hit back plus, I guess a double five is almost the case. So I'll put three on the bar. I'll take my chances. Now he's going to just cover the deuce point. He's glad he did. His, his idea was that okay, I got I, my back checkers are free now. And he gets three on the bar, I'm not all that afraid. So now I believe he should hit the three and come to the uh, 10 point. There's a double five Joker return shot, but shrug. Now Alex make the 10 point, just saying, all right, you can't hit me with a double five. And then he can go 11 to eight for another builder. This is, this is my play. Uh, Joe is hoping against hope for a double five or something. Now, it's not it's not unheard of for uh, Alex Bell from a backgammon here that would even the score. So he does he does protect his double five. He uh, he's got a good builder position. Joe enters with an ace. I think he should just play uh, play what I guess so the six point. Yep, and Joe stays on the bar, and there's the five point filled in with a five two. And Joe stays on the bar again. And 6 5, he should be playing to the five point with a six. And what? Probably, probably two to the five point, two checkers to the five point. Now, if you've read Michi Kageyama's, uh, oh, but now he, okay, he leaves, he leaves a, he leaves a, uh, he leaves a uh, that, that doesn't look right because he's got. Maybe it gave him a better chance for a position like this, but the check on three point was a little suspicious. Probably not that big a difference, but so now Alex is bearing off. Now he can play. Uh, he can bear one off, but okay, he's bearing one off. He's sort of backgammon oriented here. And uh, now he's, that's a very good roll. He clears the point, bears, bears off. And now he clears the five point with a double deuce. Now he can bear the rest of those checkers off quickly. It would be a mistake, I believe, not to clear that point. So now Joe is just going to say, all right, I'm going to get, get the heck out of there, not be backgammoned. He's thinking about whether he's going to move a six out and he's saying, I'm going to free, free a checker so I don't get bollocks for the double deuce or something. And now. There's a shot has appeared and Joe hits it with a two. All right, now dreams of backgammon go out the window. I think it's premature to break the 24 point. I think he should play. He plays to the 13 point. <clears throat> now he should make the seven point and probably just go to the 15 point. Now moving the forward checkers, we're trying to contain the last checker if you've hit in a position like this. 
you know, there's a balance between uh, moving checkers forward to control the escape points and also keeping it, um, your checkers, outside checkers compact and spread out. And Joe's sort of done both. Now, unfortunately, this is, the, this is a bad uh, five one, but he blocks, he blocks the box cars. And now he's got a five deuce and it might actually be time to break the 24 anchor because there are some aces now. And now, okay, you hit with an ace. Now, Joe, Joe is very sensitive about being backgammoned here or gammoned. So he cannot block double fives. He's got double sixes blocked. But he says, all right, if you hit me back, then I can hit that. If he does, he must hit back with a six one. Now, Joe's, oh, Joe's playing for all right. I'm going to give up a few more backgammons, but I'm also going to uh, hope that you hit me and then I hit you. So that's just Alex has hit, been forced to hit. And Joe misses a second shot at a second checker. And now, oh, Alex covers the blot. Out with a five, cover with an ace. And it's up in the 20, num 20 some numbers to hit that thing. There's 21 plus the double four. 22 shots he had. Hits, fans. Now, oh, I cannot make that eight point, he says, but I can make the three point. Making the three point won't be, might be wrong because there's no direct cover for the bar point. So he says, all right, I will not make the three point. I'll, I'll, keep my outside checkers in position so that I can make an easier time making a prime. Alex is up to the edge. Double threes is, does not make the nine points. So he's got to hit loose from the 15 point, I believe. And he get him off the edge of the prime. He's in with an ace. Three, one. Okay. Now he could, the human play is 13 to nine, which is, <clears throat> you know, he might, might make the, uh, now he just comes around and makes the nine for a six prime. And now he's going to roll the prime home. And, uh, you know, um, he's got five checkers off. Alex has got five checkers off. And there's no question of a redouble followed by a, a fat snowman, a cube coming back on almost any excuse at all. So Joe is just going <clears> to, <throat> he's going to, if he does double, it's it's going to be a, a, in a position where the take point is uh, already exceeded or very likely going to be exceeded. And what is the take point for Alex? I mean, if he, you know, loses two points, he's down 11 to 3 to 13, which is you know, a few percent winning chances. And so he would, you know, if he, uh, if Alex takes and recubes and wins eight points, then, then uh, he'd be up two away, four away. So it's not like he's always winning the match if he wins eight, but he's getting there. So Joe's not thinking of doubling now. He says, oh, do I do I now make the one point? He says, oh, the heck with that. I'm going to make the one point, and I'm going to hope to distribute my spare as well. He's blithely giving him a double six, but he says, I'm going to put my spares in better position and try to win. He could have put spares on the five and three and one outside for no shots. I don't think any shots. <clears throat> unless he had a shot, you know, unless he had to leave a shot with double sixes, that would have been the case. It was on the 18 point. I don't remember where he was. But, you know, now that now it's getting more interesting whether to double. Because, you know, let's say does not double now. He's going to think about doubling some more. He does. Okay, so this is, so how often, how often is uh, he going to want to do? Joe's got about six rolls and he drops. Okay, so <laughs> it 
looked kind of like a drop to me. Because he's about 67%. He's only about two, two to one favorite to win from two away to four away. Winning 10% would equate to only a six point something percent chance to win the match. And he was not, he was not close to 10%, I don't think. All right, so now we are starting out. Um, Alex has made the bar point, and Joe is way ahead of the race now 25 pips, 20, uh, 20 pips with. John Roll. Now Joe's gonna Joe's gonna just come out to the eighteen point, I think. And uh, Alex doesn't double. Um, probably thinks the take is too easy. Now I think whatever Joe does, Alex should probably just double. And Joe probably doesn't want Alex to double, so therefore he's probably just going to come to the 22 point. <clears throat> it's dubious that hitting outside would be right anyway. It says, all right, you, if you win a point, you're going to get to Crawford and 10 away. And now just um, just pop him with three and down. Yep. And Joe pops back, and he's got an awkward deuce there. He's going to probably just stack it on the six point, hope to escape. There's an argument for riskier plays now. I believe Alex is just going to hit him again. Get off the edge of that prime. I do not want you to escape. 5-4, I'm going to escape. Hit me if you can. Okay, I will hit you. <clears throat> Must hit. Not even close, so I'm going to pop out again hit me if you can now oh, this time i cannot hit you so five i believe is make the 18. deuce is interesting <coughs> it says i'm gonna it says go ahead and hit me do your worst i'm gonna slot i'm gonna give a diversion against that outside checker probably gonna hit twice Now the second block comes into play. Well, a fan is very harmful. So now we'll make the four point. I don't think he's supposed to hit a second check. I think he's just make, supposed to make the four point. And then the deuce is interesting, probably just a wimpy. You could play a wimpy 20 to 18 or a swashbuckling 18 to 16. And part of that, I believe, is to make the four. So he plays safely. And now here's a five, three. Does he hit again or does he come around? He hits again. <clears throat> There's another um, inopportune number. Now he could he could hit. He hits. Okay, that's this. Okay, now there is <laughs> as an anti joker <laughs> a, a bad a bad number to reply. A two one five one would also have been bad. Um, he says, "All right, I'm you know." You fanned once on my two-point board. Maybe you can fan again on my two-point board. At least you won't be out of the board after you hit me, probably. So now a hit and, I guess, lift four to three. You still don't, you're still still ahead in the race. You still do not want to be hit. Now I suppose you're going to, well, five makes the 20-point, I think. And four, he says, all right, I'll hit you again. He could have played seven to three, but he says, all right, I'm not, I don't have to worry about being gammoned. And now I've got a double anchor. I predict, I don't know what I predict. He'll certainly make the, make the double anchor. Think about the three. Now he says, I don't want to hit anymore. I'm sick of being hit back. Now Joe has got a 5-3. He's just going to run, I believe. He, he can, he can, to be fair, he can break his midpoint. But he says, all right, but first things first, I'm going to run. My opponent does not have a big board yet. If Alex wishes to, he can make the three-point. 
not the worst decision. It's not making the points in order. You'd rather make the four point. Could have slotted the four point, but this way, um, this way it doesn't leave any, it leaves, it avoids immediate accidents. Now, double deuce is a bad, sort of bad. He says, all right, I'm going to make a board. <clears throat> so if I leave a shot and then I hit you, I'm going to have this big board. If so, Joe Russell is. Um, I think that was the right play, but with a double two, you didn't, otherwise you have to leave something open. Now, Alex is running. He's, he's running out of some time. It looked like a double four. He rolled. So he made the sixteen point. Really had no choice. Otherwise, he would have had to wreck his wreck his inner board. And with six checkers tied up on the other side of the board, he's running out of time to, you know, make nice plays from the uh, on the side of the board. Now, Joe, Joe says, all right, now, you know, all good things come to an end. I have to break a point outside point <coughs> or leave a double, double shot outside him as I might as well break break the 11 and get a spare on the six. Now, that is a hit with a, what was that? He hit with a three, two, I guess. Did not have to hit. He could have made the four point and then played from there, but they're going, they're going quickly. Now, Joe, Joe Russell's down to 36 seconds. I haven't noticed that. So Joe is going to be moving quickly. So three, two, one, no, it's, a, it's only a 10 second. Normal time control is a 10 second thing. So now Joe's going to hit and come in, I believe, with a four. And uh, it's exciting. You know, Alex has still got some holding equity here. Joe's just going to try to sneak around. And uh, he could play to the 11 point bravely, which I think he probably should do. He doesn't want to waste pips outside. <clears throat> the four is a problem. In with a two, and six to two is a bad four, but no choice. <coughs> Alex has got a, you know, some seconds left. You two one. I suppose you're gonna you're gonna switch to the eleven point. There's a double three. Now that's good for Alex because he makes the uh, he makes the twenty anchor. He's remade that double anchor, and I guess he's going to yeah he's going to hit two. Now Joe Joe hits back. And I guess he's going to have to hit back again. And 3-1, uh, he's up and into the four point and 6-2. And now he's going to have to come out to the 17 point with a six. Spare checker out and then seven to five. No, nothing else that I see. Now 3-2, I, yeah, I guess you've got to, it's a good opportunity to hit and clear. Yeah, he does it, and now back in with a five and a hit for Alex Toth. No, no choice. You got, you know, he's not gonna break his board, and now Joe hits back. <clears throat> Probably just gonna lift that last blo outside blot, last but one, I should say. Now he's it. Now Alex is in with a five six. He's trying to best contain Joe, so he comes out to the seventeen and. Joe rolls a 6-4 into a double shot, which Alex hits. He's got a, you know, he spreads his checkers in the outfield. In with a 4, 6-4 to four with a 2. It's a pretty good roll. I believe you should block, should block something. He might block double fives, which is what he does. A little bit better outfield control. And there's a 6-2. He's going <clears> to, <throat> he plays another 6-4. to four, gets hit. With a 5 1 fan. Now make that 10 point while well, you can. I do believe. And 14 to 13, I do believe, is also right. And now Joe fans again, and Alex is going to want to control more outfield. He goes to 15 point quite reasonably. He's got the five forward outside checkers in a compact state. Fan again, double, okay, now 4 2. Now, 
he could either have come to the 11 like that, or he could have broken his 20 point. So breaking the 20 point was not a bad idea because it would have given a real outfield flood to it. It would have given up an immediate double four joker. Double four up was already a mini joker. This is a bad three, three one. Um, extremely bad three one because it loses flexibility. Now he could play, uh, he says, all right, I could block double fours. Now he's always gonna stay flexible. Unfortunately, he gets hit with a seven and fan. And now, now Joe already is gonna hit again, decide on the deuce. Should he play 11 to nine or should he play six to four? He plays 11 to nine, he gives up a double two return shot, but he gets closer to home. I think he should just put, put a couple of checkers on the four point. The heck with. Oh, he says, I'll play safe for the moment. No six five, no double sixes. Or I mean, I mean no double. Yeah, yeah, no, no six five, I guess. And he says, I don't care about putting extra checkers on the one point. Gammons don't help me anyway. I'll just clear as quickly as I can, minimize shots. And uh, Alex is fanning. Joe has created a gap inside, which uh, Alex has not been able to fill. He would like to come in on Joe's four point, but unfortunately he cannot do so. And now is a double shot. Okay, double shot by Joe and a miss by Alex. He's got to keep both of those back points intact. I guess I suppose he's going to play 15 to eight. And six, four, two off. He's still got a chance for a shot. I suppose he should play uh, 13 and seven points. Just flood, flood now bought boxcars and the match is over. Joe Russell has won the Masters and uh, that's it. Congrats to Joe Russell and what are the PRs? They're probably pretty good. 382 for Alex and 546 for Joe. I mean, I, I don't know what that 546 is about, but you know, it's hard to play when you're the leader. Uh, you know, the, the leader can make a bunch of a bunch of mistakes. Let's say cute mistakes. So, you know, when should when should I double when I'm a big favorite? But anyway, this this was a very exciting match, and uh, you know, Joe opened a big lead and, and basically maintained it. The last game was very exciting, but you know, in the end, Joe Joe pulled it off. So what? Let's see if we can analyze this a little bit. Uh, so what were the key decisions? Here's game one. Okay, uh, yeah, so. All right. Oh, okay, so I guess there's only one stream channel here. Rory's telling me, so I can't. I can't analyze, so uh, so thank you very much for for watching. And uh, it's going to be Tim Cross against uh, Boris Dektyar. Oh, against Boris Dektyar, yeah, they're both strong players, of course. Yeah, very strong. And, uh, and we'll have uh, Chris Trencher and uh, Ray Fogerland on commentary momentarily. Um, Marty, right. thank you so very much. I really appreciate it. Uh, uh, you know, wish it was a closer match, uh, but you know, you get what you get. Now you got time to to see the other final match. So absolutely, we're gonna. Hi, Marty. Hey, Ray. That doing? must be Ray. I got somebody good for this commentary. <laughs> yeah, you got Tim. Chris right? Trencher is who they got. <laughs> oh, you got Chris. I'm sorry, Tim is playing. Yeah. Now you got you got you got some you got some good commentators. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna sign off and I'll let you leave you guys to it. Thank we'll you see very you later, much, Marty. Good yeah, seeing you, Marty. Fun. All right. You gallery do. Hi, Chris. Hey, Marty. Hi there. Oh, let's see. Chris, you going to turn on your video, buddy? I don't Stop. think he has his hey, sound man. on. Here we go. I do Hi, have my sound on. There you go. Okay. okay. Now we can hear you. Um, if one of you guys want to keep an eye on for when they uh, start, I'm going to do some... Uh, uh, what's it called? A little bit of uh, setting up the stream and whatever. So if you guys can... Uh, Where's the stream so, in this thing that says so Chicago Open yeah, Backgammon? No, no, sorry. Um, 
no, that's my that's my YouTube uh, what's it called Zoom profile picture. Um, you're just gonna go Ray and Chris. You guys are just gonna go to Galaxy and watch the match, and then do commentary uh, here. If you watch the stream, you can't watch the stream because the stream is about five minutes behind. Okay, so you're just gonna go to uh, Galaxy. Okay, and so we are live right now, right? You are. You can say hello to the world. Hey, folks. Uh, welcome, Ray Fogelin and Chris Trench. Hey, and thank you guys for being here. Hey, glad to be here. No, you'd I'm rather be playing, actually. Ray, I wouldn't you rather be playing? <laughs> Ray, not really. Playing. I can't beat anybody playing over 11. So I don't want to play. <laughs> it would be embarrassing. Okay, and but where did they start the match yet? Um, you can go to Galaxy, and that's why, uh, if you don't mind, actually, and search I'm Lanx, L E N L A L A N C S. They have not. Uh, I'm actually going to message them momentarily, let them know that we are 100% ready if they don't start in the next moment. I saw them both around on the video. They're waiting. Okay. All right. Well, as soon as they get started, we'll be able to join them. Uh, Watch. Uh, yep. Observe. So Ray, I was thinking of coming out to Vegas. I mean, I'm I'm starved for the poker. Really, really missing it. Oh, okay. Well, um, I'm not much of a poker guy unless you want to play video poker. But I'd go play in a tournament with you. I don't care. We could hang out a little bit. I think he prefers that you're not actually that good of a or much of a poker player. <laughs> that makes him happy, I believe. <laughs> He just hopes I'm just as good at poker as I am at backgammon. <laughs> so then he knows he could outplay me. Yeah. So okay. he's the all time points leader, right? Who oh, no. You're talking about Neil Kazaroff. Aren't oh you eat the heart. At one time I was for about a month at the end of 2015. Uh, okay, so I am good to go. Let's see if we can get these players ready. Uh, By the way, is it Tim Cross? Yes, Tim Cross yeah. and Boris Dektier. Boris, okay. And uh, Tim's what fourth place in the points right now? I am not sure of that. I can check it in a second. And you could tell us how many points these guys are going to get each, the winner. And runner. That I do not. Uh, uh, oh, there's there's your namesake, regular fish. Oh, Marty didn't leave the room. I can't bounce him. Well, he's not saying Oh, there he is. Thing. He just left. He just left. Thank you, Marty. Somebody want to tell those guys to get started? I just did. Okay. And Tim is the number two player. Yep, if he wins... No. In the ranking uh, of the this site, Galaxy, yes, he's got he's a three thousand eighty-five rating. He's actually almost caught up with Zdenek, only seven points behind. If he wins this match, he'll probably take over the lead, huh? It, dep it depends on Boris's uh, ranking. Well, Boris is about twenty-three hundred, I think. Let's see. Yeah, depending on the, yeah, depending on whether he wins the differential PR. Right. If you know, if you don't win the PR, you're not getting any points. You also have to win the match. Also, the also the magnitude of the difference. You know, this is going to be a thirteen point final, right? Eleven. Eleven. The final. Eleven. Okay. Yeah. I just gave him the green light. 
So we should see it. And Boris is going to create the match. Oh, no, that's not what I want to do. Boris is going to create the match. And Boris is beat Boris 7. He's Boris 742. 742. Right. So if you put that in the search window, there's nothing com coming up yet. Tell me if you see something. Hey, folks. Uh, once again, this is the sunny Florida Open Championship final match. We're going to have some live commentary with Ray Fogerlin and Chris Trencher. And the match is once again between uh, Tim Cross of the UK and uh, Boris Dektier, originally of Russia, I believe, and now he lives in the great state of New York. Boris has created the match. Links just joined. You guys joining the match? You can see it? I'm yep. in there. Okay. Chris, you good to go? Hello, everybody. Yep, I'm in there. Uh, we have uh, Tim uh, opening with a 6-1. Boris responding with a 6-1. And they're off and running. Hey, Chris, if you have anything else on your computer, shut, please shut it down because you're breaking up already. Yeah. I don't know what – you got a little feedback. Um, this is Ray out in Las Vegas. I decided not to gamble today. I'm going to come and watch some guys and see if I can learn something about backgammon. This would be a good time to just make the five point, I think, for uh, Tim. Because then Bill, Boris can't use his builders on the other side. Can you hear me a little better now? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. okay. What would you do with this 2-1? I, I agree with you. I, I would make the five point. All right. You, you either take the lead in the priming battle or you force a, a little bit of, you mix it up, uh, you know, with a nice three to one advantage of points. You know, I agree with you 100%. Well, the guy who's got a 3,000 ranking split, so that shows what we know. But maybe they're a little tight early, and, you know, that's kind of natural in the beginning. I might even hit twice here. Oh, you can run, though. That's that's solid, just running one checker. Yeah, well, he's got the 13 pip lead in the race, so generally um, XG wants you to respect that, so I would probably run yeah i think so good point hey folks i know i currently have it on speaker mode so it's flipping back and forth in terms of the camera between uh ray and chris i'm gonna adjust that momentarily it'll take me a minute and i'll get them both on the screen please bear with me but uh i'll be with you shortly I'm hitting here with the ace. I was trying to decide. Yeah, I don't think there's any time for a uh, a back game. Uh, yeah, that's probably true. You can always maybe get into it later. So I don't think we want to come out. So it's yeah, it's the four point or the five point. So Boris hit a couple of times and he retook the race lead, but he's going to have a little trouble coming in with that structure. Yeah, I think I would have played 15, 13, 12, 7 last time. The spare on the, the spares on the 13 and the 7 is a little more flexible than having them stacked on the 10. I think you just go six two here. You're just waiting for a two or a three to reposition the spares. All right. I'd have been tempted to make the five point. This is gonna be the last because otherwise he's gonna fill in the five point board and then it's gonna be death for any shots. Yeah, so it's right. Uh Boris has a 2351 rating, but uh Tim. 3,085, this tournament's helped him out quite a bit. That's the second highest rating here at this site. 
uh, that's, those are some pretty amazing numbers. These guys virtually never lose uh, on PR. They're like Victor. So this is a pretty routine. Boris is going to try not to leave a shot, and Tim's going to wait and hope to get one. And uh, when push comes to shove, at some point, Boris will send over the cube, but maybe not with the two gaps. Now he'll clear that outside point, and then he can probably send it over for the 20 pip lead. And Tim's run out of sixes after this, so. Ooh, I mean, it's only 12? I think he had a double there. I think it was enough, and Tim's a bench like a before. Yeah, you're but breaking up so a little bit again. I don't know what the deal is. Maybe you're not. A losing race, and, and yeah. Boris had a couple of numbers like uh, double threes and double twos. Well, they're going to probably, early in the match, a tendency in the finals is to err on the side of caution, I guess. So, uh, but I think after that, now, well, that was a low number, so the race will be again closer. What's it going to be? Ray, I'm going to, Ray, I'm going to log out and come back in and see if that helps, okay? So I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, I can handle it in the meantime. Now it's only an 8-pip lead in the race, but he sent it. Boris should put a guy on the four point here and fix his main problem, but he didn't. And again, he should, there he goes. He got one on the four point. That's going to be, well, it's not that close. But these guys have been rolling double fives all weekend to win races, so we'll see what happens. There we go. There's a set. I've got to move Chris's picture. Yeah, Tim has some more checkers off now, or did. All right, they're rolling like they want to win. It's a great situation for Tim. It's no double now, but he owns the cube in a virtually even race, and so he's just going to bide his time until he gets a, a little advantage. Now he's up three pips, which is more than 10%. He's got six checkers left, and Boris has six checkers left. He could think about doing it right here. Um, there's a formula that says if you're up 10% in a, in a race, you can double or redouble. That's a basic thing. The biggest problem with Tim's position is he's going to miss on fours. But there he goes. 3,000 rated player. He's thought about it and sent it. I don't think that uh, Boris could pass this. He's just going to have to bite the bullet and take and hope that Tim rolls fours. He did take. Tim did roll a four. Now Boris is in decent shape. Oh, my. This could be a... This could be interesting right here. Boris is going to be on shake down a pip, or let's see, six, seven pips, I guess it's going to be. He didn't think about cubing. They're going too fast. Oh, here, Boris will be a favorite no matter what on the next shake. And he could win on this one. So this would be a sexy time to send over an A-cube. In the finals, it's hard to pull the trigger, though. And he didn't. Look at that. He would, well, I don't know how much. We'll see 
how it would have worked out. Whoop, double fours. That's how you get a 3,000 rating. You win the games when you're a hundred dog. All right. All right. How do I sound now? Okay. I missed you. Ray, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? All right. Can yeah, you hear okay. me? I think we're okay now. All right. I've been talking all this time, but I don't know. Yeah, we heard you, Ray. Okay. Well, that was a great first game. I think Boris missed a redouble to eight, but he would have lost eight points if he'd have done it. So, uh, he zigged when he should have zigged instead of the other way around. <laughs> yeah, I think he, I think he, I think he did. Other than uh, two one or four one, he's he's a favorite on the final shake, and Tibbs never redoubling there. Yeah, and I, I guess that's and then he, well, he yeah, loses immediately. He loses immediately on four one. And um, Tim has a redouble if he rolls 2-1, but for any other shake, he's a favorite, and the cube has no value to Tim. So the, I, I think you're right. It had to be a redouble. Well, that's great, because that the first time this weekend I was right about something. Oh, this is going to be a pretty strong position right here. Only the scores should keep Tim from sending it, but and maybe not then. This is yes. this is a clear double in the pass. Okay. It's probably it's probably close to too good. All right. Well. If he wins this match, Tim could Possibly be the first one to 3,100 rating on this site. But Boris is solid. And if a little bit conservative, so I think that the non-redouble to eight was a represent, representative of his uh, match kind of personality, if you want. And I've only played Tim once or twice, but I just get the feeling he just tries to do the best thing. And uh, his checker plays are kind of a little interesting sometimes. But they obviously must be pretty good. So pay attention and learn something about those. Yeah, I mean, he's kind of looking at this. I don't think he wants to play 24-18, but it's hard to play this productively. 13-8, uh, 6-5, it's awkward. 8-2 is a little bit awkward. So now, uh, uh, rather, Boris had that option. Tim will just make the four point here. He should, I think. A lot of people will make the dang bar point and then bring a builder up and and split off the six point. But whenever you roll double aces and you got four guys on the six, those guys belong on the four. Oh, this is not a very good number. That just became better. <laughs> yeah, it did. Boy, he didn't think for even a second about doubling that because he's down 27 pips. Well, when you see guys playing in the finals, they don't miss many shots because that's not how you get here. Two six in the bar. There you go, Ray. There's your number. 
No way. Be sure to collect your royalties. That, that never happens. One six. Now what's he supposed to do? I get, yeah, that's pretty routine. Okay. Boris aren't there laws that guy. protect us against Ray saying that? If there aren't, there should be. I'm almost There's done, folks. You have a mute button, don't you? <laughs> Every time that happens, just click on it real quick. I'm muting myself more than I'm muting you guys. I'll actually have this crop set up momentarily, and I'll have their this set up slightly better for the stream. Sorry, folks. Almost done. And now, against all odds, we've reached a uh, position that's not volatile, and the game's going to go on for a while. Yeah, there's four pip leading the race, so yeah. Tim caught up quite a bit with that. And he, he wouldn't can, mind uh, throwing another ace. set. He can make the ace. He can make the one and uh, make the ace point and bring the ace in here. Just not not uh, saving a six. Yeah, all right. Cake, just come around the corner and be patient. That's the last uh, six for Boris. And Tim makes his board just in time. Uh-oh, we can't double this. It's going to fire and miss. First right. break Boris has got. Now, there he goes. He sends it. This is going to be... A there's enough contact to take this, right? Even though you're down 13, you get a shot on, what, 16 numbers don't get by or something? We should know this. Uh, three, I'm pretty sure he, he had enough contact to take that. But then again, he's in the finals and I'm not. So when well, you, had 15, plus... you had 15 numbers to leave a shot and then um, you're going to hit that. One third of the I'll time. Call it, call it, call it 40% because some of them are bigger shots like when he rolls boxes. So that's maybe six wins. And then in the other 21, he needs three wins. So he needs to be about 15% in the race, which... I think he would be. So, yeah, he, he probably had a marginal take there. Yeah, I think so. Um, I try to break but he was gonna be down to fractions and say if it's like about four-ninths of the time he leaves a shot and one-third of the time I hit it, then I'm four and 27, and, you know, you can figure out some percentages from there if you like. Yeah, uh, I figured he needed 15% he did fifteen percent in the race when uh, he doesn't wind up hitting him, and I, I think that's about where he was. Yeah, okay. Probably a little better. I guess Tim's going to come out with two, and he's just trying to figure out what he's going to do with the other two. He made the two point. All right. Then he'll bring the other builders while he's waiting for a double and endeavor to make the four and five points. Well, that is not a good number. No. Yeah, I'm sitting in a room where there's a sunlight is on the shutters. Yeah. Okay, great. Now, now it worked? It's better? Okay. I would have considered doubling there for Boris, honestly. Yeah. Um. I mean, the, you, know, you know, he's going to win some gam. He's going to win. He's going to win a few gammons here when uh, um, Tim fans and even if uh, Boris had missed with some number that made his board, Tim had a variety of numbers to break off the bar and not cover anything. Yeah, and he doesn't want to lose his market at this score. I mean, it's a little yeah. bit early in the match, but you know, Tim's already halfway home. Now, yeah. what did he think? He was too good here? I guess so. I know. I'm sure he thought he wasn't good enough, but I, 
I probably would have doubled after the five three. But now uh, yeah, uh, I, Tim well, just rolled the Joker. Yeah, he did. He wouldn't have gotten to if I was going. But of course, we would have doubled at five to uh, on the come, and we would be in worse problem. <laughs> well, this is a good shot. Yeah. So he just plays par five, I think. Yeah. Oh, that was forced. So he's going to hit with three. And the question is, do you? Well, I was going to say, do you leave that there or not? I would have thought about leaving it there, but worked out well for Tim. It worked out well for uh, Boris, rather. Right. I think I'm going to do the ace four to one. Oh, he hit with that. That was interesting. All right. Well, that worked out well. Okay. Well, Boris will just arrange his builders and hope Tim rolls a six and he can squeeze off a... So you're bringing the four in. Do you stack them on the deuce point to stay all the way back or do you play 13-11 with the last one? I think I would have come in with a two to maximize the builders I, I, and I would have just come down with a four, but I would have missed this I would missed this opportunity here. But he should close them out and then shoot at the two. Oh, I disagree. <laughs> right. I disagree. I think he should have hit the two outside and then hit the ace inside. Okay. Even if he rolls the ace, you got two on the roof and Tim's got an open five for you'd have to get really unlucky there and you just don't win enough gamins this way. I think you changed my mind. What I have found is if you play bad, you lose. <laughs> That's why I get the comment. In the final. Yeah, but what you've also found is if you play well, you can lose anyway. <laughs> well, I haven't been used to doing that very much. I haven't right. not very many times playing well. Anyway, I would have I would have hit the two outside. I, I think you're, the point of playing that way was to maximize the gamuts, and um, you know, especially when you're way down on the match, you just got to go for it. Yeah. Okay. Especially because of the score, that was a better way to go. Jeez, did he get it? He didn't get to where he could win, but he came close. All right, five to three. No, I don't think Tim's far enough ahead to just come to the five point, but that's not a bad play. Um, Oh, there, as soon as I say that, he does it. Proves me wrong. Yeah. I think I would have made the 11 and the 4 there, but but, but Boris is uh, rather typical play is fine. These double twos okay. plays early in the game tend to be very marginal and somewhat a question of style. Right. Yeah, they are. Uh, I try to make something with it. You know, if I was the guy behind, I'd want to definitely make two points. And if I'm the guy ahead, I want holding games and anchors, you know, so Tim's play from being ahead <coughs> could be wrong, but it's wrong in the right direction. You know, he's uh, making simpler <laughs> games out of it. Although, uh, they're both pretty well experienced. Tim might have more experience and be a little bit better to handle uh, different situations. He's got a 700 point differential in PR. You know, Boris is very solid. I mean, I play with him frequently in New York, and he's really, um, in the last year, taken a step from a guy who used to typically play in the uh, advanced jackpot rather than the sort of highest level opener, super jackpot, whatever you call it. And, um, you know, I would say 
couple of years ago, he was probably playing around a five and a half, but now he's uh, uh, a low fours or even just a four um, on average. So, uh, you yeah, know, I, I don't think it's a huge difference. He's played in the twos and threes even against me, but um, I'm just uh, pointing out that the rating differential and yeah. Tim is, you know, at a an elite level. I mean, uh, at this point, yep. I have to take some notice of that. I mean, uh, it impresses me. But, yeah, I think Boris is much improved, and he's strong, you know. Yeah, oh, so. It's kind of an ugly number. Hitting, hitting really isn't an option, and the six isn't convenient over there. Um, I think Boris will make the three point here, or rather, Tim will make the three point here. Yeah, Tim. Yeah, he will. All right. He'll bring two down. Yeah, that was actually a nice number. I think Tim runs off here. Yeah, he's got it. Yeah. I take his chances with the three builders. I mean, if he plays 13 to six, he's just conceding the game on 17 numbers. Um, I'd rather give him, you know, nine, nine numbers or here. seven or six or whatever it is. Yeah. He's got the nine pointing numbers here plus double fours and double fives, but that's, that's less than giving him all sixes. Plus you, plus you wind up with a much better uh, position to hold him when he doesn't roll one of those numbers he's looking for. Yeah. Case in point. I'd be inclined to just make the four point here and give him the three shot. It's because uh, you, you make a play like this. Now Boris really doesn't have very many good numbers next time. If he made the four point, then um, when Tim misses, he moves that blot into the outfield. And then Boris is going to have some fly shots on it. But even when he misses that, he's got structure after that. Well, he made, he rolled Look at this. this is a joker right here. Yeah. He was even more awkward than before. So the five's coming in and the two is slotting. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Hit and split, I guess. Yep. yep. Oops, that's not gonna that's this is a this is a pretty good number for Tim. Yeah, all things considered, I like this number. Enter and hit. Hit, hit make two points to close point. a minute. Checks, hey, checks all the boxes. <laughs> wow. He had uh, he had three items on his to do list and he got all, he hit all three of them with that number. So that was a top ten roll, you would say? That was top like the, the holy grail. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. How'd this guy get in the finals again? That's the old uh, kill three birds with one stone. All right, so now he's just trying to maximize shot equity at the other blocks. Huh? Well, Boris is. Oh, that did hit. I guess I. Yeah, he's still. He's got four crossovers that side. He's about, I'd say, 75, 80% to get Cam in here. Yeah, I think so. Uh... Tim has doesn't have optimal spare distribution, but uh, so he'll clear the six, then play four to two, and then the question is, do you take that guy off or stack them all up on the deuce point? And it's an interesting situation because uh, if you roll a big double and you left them odd, then you leave a shot and. Uh, but it's so close, whether, you know, you don't really want to roll a big double that would have guaranteed you a gammon and leave a shot because of it and get hit or maybe even lose. So I don't know. It's a little conservative. I think I'd go six to two with two. Tim's bearing this off like I do, except for this number. Now it's virtually 
guarantee. Now he's yeah. Now he's a hundred percent. Yeah, We're very close. That double fives. That was the best roll I've seen by anybody all weekend. <laughs> I like to do that too. All right, seven to three. Oh, well, maybe the dice are going to turn around and give Boris a little bit more of a break here. But Tim is rolling numbers he doesn't even have to think about so far. I guess I did too, yeah. Yeah. Now you got to make the ace point. Yeah. A double now, here. It's oh, I think he Go ahead. Did you think oh, he had a I double? Make... Yeah. Because you're four away, that's the last time you can just double and go for the G and... Uh, but I, I don't think Tim's looking for instant gratification necessarily. But four away is kind of the last time when you can be very aggressive with the cube. You got to, you know. Oh, interesting. Boris chose not to hit him. He just anchored on the three point. So now Tim should just make it and slot the two, I guess. Or though he could run, I don't know, but that would leave him wide open with three blots all over the place. Or he could even make the two point, but I don't guess that's the way to go. No, no, I think you want to make the four here. All right. Yeah. Oh, oh look at this play. There's an interesting move, huh? Take a maximum advantage of the... Look at this guy with the double fives. Enters, makes a five point, and hits two. Wow. That's some of the greatest sets of fives I've ever seen. I like that play, five down, out, and four down. Well, Chris, if you were playing the finals in Tim's shoes, you would be winning the match right now, except if Boris rolled double twos. Oh, Boris deserves a break here. <laughs> yes, he does. I agree 100%. I think Boris has maybe never won an ABT event, and uh, I know he wants to so bad he could taste it. And... Uh, I think he's tired of Layla laughing at him there in New York. <laughs> Layla, if you're out there, I wanted to say hi. There are the Russian contingent. So I would, uh, I would come in here and play uh, for Tim. I would come in here and I think I would play 1610 because you are not going to be able to hold the 16 point and you do not want him to be able to hit you. Uh, safely, which he might be able to do next roll. Now, obviously, he could hit unsafely, but I suspect he'll just play 13-6 here without hitting. Yeah, to hit actually sort of fixes whatever kind of problem Tim might have at the moment, but oh, he, he did, did hit him. Hit. All right. Now, I just come right back in the outfield, right? Yep. Yeah. But Tim didn't do that. Okay. I don't think that was right because he gives himself – he's breaking immediately with double threes, and if he goes if he goes two times without a, a high number, he, he gets into a mess. I, I, I think it would have been right to come out last roll with four. Yeah, in general, I learned that from the computer. It's, you know, 
It just keeps now, pumping now, checkers now in the outfield. Now he has to come out with the two blots. Yeah. yeah, I'm going all the way 2014 here. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. That was good. Hey, folks. In general, the computer seems to just keep pumping checkers into the outfield and challenging you to hit them. You know? Well, in these types of positions, what XG teaches you is you have to watch for those you know, remote scenarios where you break in a position like Tim's and just make sure it doesn't happen. And the way Tim does that is by coming out with the four of the roll before last. So you get off the immediate double threes plus the scenarios where you roll like three, two twice in a row or double twos yeah. followed by three, two or whatever. Just, you know, it's not likely, but it's on the dice. And, and you know, the risk of coming out was very, very small. Hey, folks, if you right. like what you're seeing, there's uh, I see we have 73 watches currently, but only 10 likes. Do me a favor and hit that like button. And also, if you'd like to, you can press the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. And that way, every time the USBGF uh, goes live here on the YouTube channel, you will get a uh, notification and you can watch the streams. Uh, thank you again, Chris and Ray, doing a great job. I'm enjoying listening, and I'm going to go back on standby. Okay. Thank you, Rory. Four three for Boris. He can't volunteer a shot, and he hates killing checkers. Well, if he leaves the eight shot. He's, he leaves the eight shot. He's getting hit with five numbers anyway. Good point. So, and I sometimes. And then, you know, if you do make the three-point, you know, that's the prettiest play. And it's got the best chance of working eventually, you know. And then if the guy hits you, you could always, you know, you're allowed to roll a two and have a game. All right. All right. Tim needs to come around now before Roy, before uh, Boris fills in his board. I'm playing 29 here. Yeah, he, if he doesn't, if he plays two in, then he's going to have to run his next six, and and Boris will have filled in at least one more point. So that, and that was convenient that that yeah. went there. Now this is going to be a hit, loose, and a cover, right? Yeah, that's what I would do. It's risky, but you're not going to. What else can? He, yeah, I mean, you know, you got to. He doesn't have anything. Sometimes. If he doesn't, if he doesn't. If he doesn't do that, he's conceding. He's just going to play a deuce point game. They may not even have timing, so he's got to take a chance, even though this is going to get him gambling some of the some portion of the time. And it wins. Oh, it why wins, did yeah. he double? Oh well, I, I don't know. What do you think? Did he have a double there? I think I would have. Look at this. Wow. No, he still had. He was still thirty pips behind and had two guys behind him for Brian. He didn't have All a double. All right. Well, he didn't even stop to think about it, and you sort of need to do that. He also was a gin to cover. He had ones, twos, and eights. That's 24 right. numbers. So, Well, I can tell you from Tim's standpoint, he was glad that he didn't think about it, and he's gleaning some information. Even if you choose not to double in those situations, you have to stop and think and let the guy fret. Oh, God, he's going to cover. And then I always fan on five-point boards, and then he'll get out. And, you know, uh, psychology can win some games for you sometimes. <laughs> nice. There's a good shake. Tim again, he's just annihilating. And a fan. I think you bring the five around and uh, play the ace up. That's what I would do. Yeah, okay. Would you button up or would you keep fighting for the five point here? I think I would do this, just respect the racing lead. He doesn't always roll a four. Right. Um, okay. Sometimes he rolls a, you know, if he, if, you know, he really wants to keep that checker there to make the five point. And, and so when he doesn't roll a four, a lot of his, not, not too many of his other numbers are useful. Gotcha. All right, man. Three, three, one is three ones duplicated. I don't, I think Boris would just make his own five point with three one. Right. And it's not, you know, you feel like when you leave the guy alone on the five point, he's automatically going to make it, but most numbers don't. Everything Tim's doing is working beautifully for him. Oh my God.
<laughs> Look at this. All right, so um, three away scores like this when you're three away and you have a big lead, you have to sit on the cue and just vice grip your hands to your sides because um, a person doesn't almost have to look at the position. He can just take any cube if you're three away and you have a big lead because you're handing over so much leverage. And that's a very important um, match management tool to put into your quiver. I think I'd leave that plot there. You play, yeah, you play ten six four one. You play ten six four one. You're 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 asking to get into some messy situations with the inflexibility of the next few rolls. It's six numbers. You're going to have return sixteen shots. return to be hits. You. Yeah. I'm just playing ten six here, or rather a thirteen six here. Right. Seems natural. I guess he's just looking for. <coughs> It's not a good number at all for Boris. He uh, is too, still too far behind in the race, and this really kills his timing for the holding game. I guess the holding game is going to be the... Uh, it's just going to be a three-point game. 16-point holding game, isn't it? I, I think I'd come out. Well, if you, you come even... out there, then you have to do this, but now he's just made it. You know, The only real contact is the four pips away, and you're 12 pips down in the race, so this is not ideal. So Tim should no. make the 10 point. Tim should make the 10 point because he can land there to clear the midpoint and then, yeah, play that ace. Oh, oh well, plan B is, plan B is working. All right, now we're in a straight race. It's 50-50. Yeah. Finally, something going Boris's way. Boxes and fives got him up. Now, Boris is behind quite a bit, but he also has to be a little bit careful because Tim's actual take point is not is a little bit lower than it normally would be because if he takes a cube and wins, he gets to the Crawford game. Yeah, but Tim's take point here is still higher than Boris's is. Okay, but I mean... He can lean a little bit towards taking because he's going to get to 10. You know, if he's looking for an excuse to take, that'd be a good one. But uh, again, Tim's ahead, so he's <coughs> he can't double because of the score, but he's liking the way it's going so far. Now I would take one off the four point and leave a gap on the three. Then twos are good and threes are also good. Look at this. Forget about it. All right. Oh. Tim's making our job easy. <laughs> I'm going to speculate Anything. that this is a double and a pass. Yeah. <laughs> Well, he messed up before. The match would have been over, I guess, almost if he had doubled when we were recommending it that four away. Oh, look at Boris. He's going to fight. All He's right. been fighting a little bit and still getting crushed in the last I was going to I was going to say if Tim rolls if Tim rolls anything but a 5-4 or a 4-3 here, Boris should double this score, but Tim uh, Tim stayed yeah. off the cube with the 5-4. Any, anything that didn't anchor up on a high anchor would have given Boris, um, you know, some small gammon chances if Tim tried to get back into the game, and, and and so would have merited a double. But you know, now it's just a holding game. Right, and um, at some point, Boris is going to have to draw a line in the sand and say, "I can't really lose any more games." So he can just start assuming that he's going to win them, 
And um, and if he does lose, he loses the match, but he doesn't lose much equity wise. But he hasn't really, you know, there haven't been any situations or positions where he can realistically think about it because Tim's doing this kind of stuff, making the advanced anchor. No, he can't. He can't. He's down. Boris is down in the race, and this is just not a position yeah. that lends itself to becoming uh, becoming volatile. So there's, you know, if it's not volatile, he's not winning the race. There's no reason to double, even at the score. Right. And uh, the guy who's two away really has a low take point if there aren't any gambling considerations. And uh, sometimes you go down to 18% or some kind of thing. make two points. I guess we're running off the five point again. Oh, he didn't do it that time. All right. All right. Look at this. Move now I'm five. doubling. Now I'm doubling regardless of what Tim does because Boris is going to have some. Yeah. I can't yeah. wait for. Christmas, yeah. right? Yeah. Now this could be Forrest has got Forrest has got some gambins in this position. Yeah, he's got so many blocks. Tim may decide that this is just not the kind of game he wants to play, but I doubt he's gonna drop if it's just a take. But he wins a match. I mean, you know, basically he virtually wins a match if uh Boris fans here. But the downside is it could be nine to seven if he doesn't fan here. I don't know. Match management wise, I might let this one go. It's yeah. not the kind of game I want to play. No, he took it. He took and got a hit. We'll see what happens. Yay, Boris. At least you're fighting a little bit. Do you have any choices here? You're just hitting and moving that outside checker three, right? I don't know. He could clear the eight point, but I don't know. That just adds a builder, I guess. He did do that. And Tim rolled a Tim rolled a good number. Now he's uh, Boris has got to perform again. He didn't do it. Oof! Makes the ace point. Uh oh. The fat lady is that? Is she clearing her throat? She's clearing her throat and turning on the uh, unmuting the mic. <laughs> well, they'll have to mute me for her to start singing, but I don't think Rory will have any problem doing that. Pick and pass. All right, I just try and win it easy. I think Tim wants to get off the five point now. Okay. I was wondering. Oh, he's got to, now he gets out. Yeah, absolutely. All right, with both guys, and then it just you're you're leading the race now. And if if Forrest comes in, he's going to have to come out to you in the outfield or start bearing checkers behind. It's inefficient in the race. So yeah, you just got to get off now. I would have I would have in fact come off the previous roll and given him the three one three two. But uh, I was thinking about it, but Tim moved too fast. So uh, right. now Tim will just leave one blot at a time, right? Correct. Okay. Just give him the eight shot button now. Right. Make the 14 point and slot the 11. And he did, 5-4. Boris can't find the recipe. You notice, actually, it's interesting. If Tim had played 14-6, this would have brought both guys out and created a messy situation where there are a whole bunch of plots, 7, 8, and 9 from each other. But he made the proper play to, uh, you know, maintain control over his outer board. Yeah, and he's still rolling like a god. I, I would have thought about clearing the eight point there, but he just kept it Well, Boris is out of time. Boris is out of time. He's breaking. All right. So he's just going to bring one in and make the bar point. Yeah. 
Oh, he forced him off with a four. All right. Well, there's just been very little drama in this whole thing. I, I think he should go, right? You don't want to give Tim small numbers to hit you here. <laughs> it's He's going be next bad role either anyway. way. Yeah, I yeah. don't know though. I, I mean, you're, I you're getting a shot on four numbers. Fox is yeah. five, six, five. I, I'd you're stick also, around. But you're also taking yourself out of the race if he rolls a small number. I would, I would go here. You're going right. next role anyway. I, well. He heard you. You New York guys think the same. I would have hung in there. I think five four. That would have been a, it's a little bit of an awkward shake. All right. I, yeah. You All right. Come on, Boris. Myself. Let's root for Boris. Come on, everybody. We need Layla to sing a song for Boris here. Tim's trying to give him a chance. Come on, Boris. You've been rolling double fives all weekend, double sixes. Oh, oh yes, double threes. Excitement. <coughs> if I would double roll one more ace. Boris could have a chance. Ace. Oh. oh. There it is. No. Oh, <laughs> oh man. I want to see that. Luck factor in that one. That was pretty hard. Plus 361. Yeah, and Boris, Boris played. Yeah, Boris, played Boris picked him on the PR. That's beautiful. 0. .06 difference. Right. Well, Boris had horrible luck. And uh, wow. Tim's a great champion. Yeah. Uh, congrats to Tim Cross. Look at those PRs. So very close. Um, yeah. I've uh, messaged Tim to see if he's interested in, interested in doing some post-mortem. I don't know if you guys want to stick around for that or not. Uh, I would like to say thank you very much, both uh, Ray Fogle and Chris Trencher. Fantastic job on the very entertaining commentary. And uh, Mr. Ray Fogerland, if you're not doing anything else, you might want to turn around and watch that football game. Your Las Vegas Raiders are down by, uh, leading KC with two minutes to go uh, by eight. And uh, if they great. get... If they get a first down, it should should be game over. But if they don't, the and you ball, know what? The ball you know is what, going our, to uh, what? Yeah, Rory, we were watching that here in New York, but of course we're stuck with the Giants and the Jets every week, so they pulled away from that to put the Giants game on. Oh, great! That's All just right. terrible executive. That's like the worst executive decision I have ever heard in my life. Oh, we New Yorkers are in. The Raiders football. just made it. It looks like we're. All right. we're we're in permanent football hell here. Giants and Jets are 0-8 in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> All right, guys. But Thank you for having that. me. <laughs> okay. okay uh, hey, thanks. Let, let me see if I get Timmy on the phone. See if he's interested in joining us. Okay. Timmy, did you want to join the stream for a little post-mortem? Uh, post, uh, you do? Okay, so go back to the lobby and then ask Carrie to send you to the streaming uh, channel. The breakout room, okay? Yep. Bye. So that is affirmative. Mr. Uh, uh, Tim Cross will be joining us momentarily to do a little post-mortem. Uh... Excellent. You say uh, it looks like uh, they picked up the first down. Yes, Vegas picked up. Vegas is knocking off the Kansas City Chiefs. They're, they're done doing it. Wow. It's over with. Um, they're walking off the field. I'm watching on the iPad, so I'm in slight delay. Ah, uh, wow, that's that's fantastic. Uh, let me see if I can change this to now. Gallery it's view. Unexpected. 
But the Raiders are pretty good. I thought about getting a season ticket, but uh, I don't know. Fans are... The craziest thing happened. I've I'm been a direct TV subscriber for about twelve years. Some years I get the uh uh Hi guys, hi I Rory. And hi, hey, Tim. hey Timmy. Hey, <laughs> I've got what a... rolling school do you use? <laughs> it's the <a> UK special. <laughs> I don't. Well, I'm, I'm intrigued. I don't know what I did so wrong, but uh, it'll be interesting to find out. So uh, you can't tell when you're playing, can you? But never mind. <laughs> so you're you're mad at yourself for playing a four point five eight? Well, no, I'm just slightly disappointed. It's it, it's pressure in the, those things. I'm just intrigued. That's all. But yeah. It's, it's good enough. It's good enough. Look, it, it was so close, so it's interesting. Hi, Chris. Hi, Rory. Hey, how are you? Hey, guys. Hey, thanks. I'm having a, I've said on Facebook how wonderful the American people, and, uh, the top American players have been. You know, we when, saw that. We saw that double in, five. In the, middle, in the middle of the lucky streak. You know, you get your streaks, don't you? I know what it's like to go for like four and five years and win F all. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm on, I'm on screen. Don't you know, Tim, you rolled, that double, you rolled that double five, so we were sitting there saying, you know, this type of thing is a crime in America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I've been telling you how great sports you all are and how welcoming you've all been to me. <laughs> 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 I should have known better, especially with Ray. <laughs> uh, congratulations, Timmy. The, uh, congratulations, Tim. This is your second ABT Online win this year, correct? Yeah, thanks. I'm not I'm not playing incredible get backgammon. I mean I played great against Chris and Ray, but I'm I'm only playing around four dead. And so I don't so I'm not doing anything stunning. It's just I'm getting the dice, that's it. I play well, I mean that's good enough as you know to win a tournament. But, yeah. But it's still it's very You're playing lucky. pretty good. The it's only question we thought maybe uh when you were four away, we thought you might have doubled that position, Chris and I both. Yeah. But uh you know, you're protecting a lead, and you're in yeah, the finals, was, uh, so... You know, he was A to A as well, and that was... He was A to A, which was what scared me. Ah, I see. So you're yeah. worried about the re-whip and the potential eight-pointer, and yeah, you, know, you yeah, lose so. one that you got in the bag. So, yeah, so I'll be pleased if that's what I've got. I'll be pleased if that's what's got cost me a lot, because that's... I, I, I saw that. I, I made the wrong decision, and I can learn from it, you know, right? Yeah. yeah, I don't know that it was wrong. We just, you know, we had a moment to reflect and thought maybe we would have sent it there. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. It, well, I neither just, of us has a 3,000 rating, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, well I, you see why I've got it. You can, you can see why I've got it. We're rolling like that. <laughs> I just, actually, Tim's, actually, Tim, your take at 9 to 3 is a 1.002. It's literally a, a tossed-up decision. All oh, right, thanks. That was an important one, wasn't it? Hey, right. hey guys, I just brought the match. 50, I just brought up the match. He's only got the uh, the Tim's cubes decision on nine three when he had all the blocks. Yeah. yeah. Hey guys, I just brought up the match on the analysis so the folks on the stream can see uh, the match. If you guys want to bring it up individually, we can go through some of the errors uh, and what do we checker do? plays. Hit the if there's anything button? Yes, click I the analyze button. Oh, I've, uh, I've left now. Oh, no. oh uh, I can go back on, can I? Yeah, you can. Just go to the analysis tab and click view. I think I can. All right. I am 100% positive you can. Oh, I just closed the window by accident. Uh, you want the match number? Um, uh, 398 what, 9655. Well, it, it'll be the last game I played, won't it? I just. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah, so. So we'll just go through it. Uh, we'll just look at, uh, if you guys recall yeah, any it, specific yeah. plays, that's fine. But otherwise, I'll just click uh, through uh, uh, Tim's errors. Oh, yeah. If he yeah. just wants to comment on what he was thinking at any point in time. Yeah. Um, are you, you there, Tim? Are you have yes, it match am, up? Yeah. Okay. So you have, you have a little small little error. Oh, it's actually not that small. 0. 0.077 with a 2-1. Yeah, I looked at it. Yeah. Well, uh, so you played twenty four twenty one. Yeah, I mean, I saw seven five six five. Why didn't I do it? Um, I don't. <laughs> what what <laughs> game? That, 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 that looks like pressure to me a bit. It's early in the match. Yeah, there was a little, little yeah, bit that of looks pressure. A bit high pressure. Yeah. Always in the finals, huh? Yeah, which isn't impressive, but never mind. 
Okay. Uh, yeah. Then the ne very next play is a 5-3. And there are a lot of different options here. Uh, both, I think Ray and Chris thought the run was right, and it looks right. like it is. Right. Yeah, my thought was just he's got a... I just thought, I thought it could get primed quite easily, that fight, that last checker. That's that's why that's where I got that wrong. If he'd have had obviously, if he'd have had less in his prime, I mean, I suppose looking at his six point, perhaps I can't. I, I should have priming is tougher than I thought. But he's already got like a broken four prime with potential for more. That that was why I thought the anchor was more important. Obviously, obviously I'm wrong, but um, yeah, that's that's why I went wrong there. All right. Well. Yeah. yeah, I think we felt just that you've got a 21 pip lead after the race, yeah. and you should respect your racing lead there. Yeah. Okay, the next thing I see is move number 15, a little 5-3. That Just looking at it, yeah, it wants you to come out and cover, and that's, you know, my, my first instinct is to come out and cover. And you may... Has anybody got, got this, has anybody got this on, um... Oh, what? I can't see you. Oh, 5-3, yeah. There you go. So instead of coming out, you slotted the deuce here. Yeah, I think the idea is to be come out with the five there, yeah. um, unless Boris rolls very well, like a one one. Unless Boris rolls a double or a five one. Yeah. It's hard to play this number usefully, and it 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 puts pre it, it puts direct pressure on the two remaining checkers on the midpoint. Yeah. And then Tim's in a position to roll a four or a six two the following roll to to make a point out there. It's um it's um. You know, you might even have noticed it's a, it's a, a, a if there is a style which I don't like styles at our level, but um, I, I do play I, I, do, I play for a strong board, at, relentlessly at all times, and that's where I've gone wrong there. You know, if I, like I say I don't believe in styles, but if I have got one, I'll do anything to make the board quickly. Okay. Yeah, but, but yeah, poor. Okay. Uh, is there anything else you guys want to look at in the match, by the way? The double, the, should we look at the I double know, with the, cube, with, with the cubes just dead? The, the racing cubes, where they did straightforward. Sure. Well, let's uh, look at that one at seven to three when it was four away and oh, see yeah. if there was. Yeah. I don't know if there was a doubling or not there, but we were thinking. So I'm going on, on to game two. I'm making a lot of little errors, aren't I? Yeah. The style wasn't good today. So the first one, the three two. Yeah. You brought two down and it prefers a split here. I think yeah, you need to do a little something with the that. split just because yeah. uh, he's threatening to make five four points, and if he makes the five or four, yeah. um, you know, you need to get that back. I can tell I'm, doing, I'm doing a bit of overthinking here. I can tell. Um, I'm just I'm just starting to I'm thinking things like oh I'm playing with a it's a prime against a split. I'll I'll try and maximize my prime and advantage. I, I, it's kind of overthinking in the moment, I think. But I need to sort this out in the game. Yeah, it's pretty small, though. Just yeah, 32. Yeah. The next one is the 5 1. Oh, no, I thought about this for a lot, a long time. I, in fact, I did something there that I, I actually knew that XG wouldn't like it. <laughs> it's very rare, very rare I do that. Very, very rare. The split. I just didn't fancy being behind, leaving both men on the ice point. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So I need to look at those positions because I don't believe because I've not. I need to re. That's now. This is different. This is a a move a mistake I would always have generally have made. It's okay. nothing to this one's not a, anything about pressure. This is. I I can't. I just couldn't. I hate leaving both men on the twenty four point. Sure. When when I'm facing any any kind of prime structure, and perhaps I've got I go too far. Why well, no? I know I go too far, so that's what I need to I need to move work on that one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. On to game three, I think. Is there any question yeah. about okay. the double and drop? No, no. Oh. On to game three. Is it clean? Yeah. Oh, I, my drop was wrong. Yeah, yeah we said something about that. We thought you I could squeeze enough contact yeah. and racing equity. Yeah, right. I probably underestimated the racing equity. Yeah. Let's look at the detail. Yeah. It is... Yeah, that's... Wow, you yeah, actually I win 25%. Wow. 
I, you know, I, I underestimated the rating equity. There must, yeah, there is. There's more than. Um, well, there's also yeah. there's obviously some hit equity. How how many numbers don't get yeah, by? Oh, oh yeah, sorry, I, I, but I calculated the hit equity as less than twenty five percent and dropped. Oh, okay, gotcha. So I didn't add on the uh, rating equity to the the calculation of the hit equity. If you see what I mean? Yeah, it's not going to be. But obviously, the hit equity is a big set. Yeah. Something. Yeah. But that's enough to put it quite a lot way over, isn't it? Yeah, that uh, that's that was another mistake there, and also the five nil lead. Yep, I was. And, I, I thought, and there's so not a the lot actual... of difference between losing one and losing two because of the no. uh, odd versus even. Yeah. So where are we? So take... okay. No. So how about I just point one? Yeah. Uh, we're going back to the log, and moving on to the next game, game four. Okay. Okay. I thought, this was, I thought this was a very early double, isn't it? Yeah. Because the score is not as bad as, it, as it, I thought. Oh, and I got the double six wrong. You're double I just thought it looked six. so, yeah. I think we were about four or five, just after the tape. <laughs> it was a great double six, but I thought it just looked so, having five men on, five men on the six and four men on the seven. Looked really ugly. I Look could really. Ugly. I could be wrong, but my thinking is the reason why the two point is wrong is because on the next roll, yeah. most of the time you're moving those checkers from the midpoint. Yes. So, um, and then you're leaving fly shots, and if yeah, you happen but... if you happen to roll a one, it uh, yeah. you know, then you're you know potentially just moving one of those checkers, and leaving the shot there. So you want to bring yeah, them down and put them in a useful position. Yeah, I can see it now. But by by um, going to the two point, I'm not helping the problem of the uh, the six point stack. Am I? That's I can see that now. I can. I, I thought I was trying to help the problem of the six point stack. You know gotcha. the, the fact that sure. yeah, yeah, and uh, I'm not. Sure. I'm not well, you brought that. down a couple of builders, and then you didn't. Ro you rolled something that didn't make one yeah. of those points. So yeah. it was just a, yeah. You know, it is. It is. I mean, what, it's one of the things that actually, I, I'm not making, trying to make too many excuses. I do find, is it being listened to my gal people? This the one thing I don't like about Galaxy is not being able to see mine and people not being able to see thought processes. I find it. I don't. I oh, don't going back and forth, yeah. Yeah, I don't see any, all. You see is the final decision. You didn't see me. All I was looking at. You see a lot from how people, what they look at, don't you? And uh, yeah. it also help, it helps it also helps in cube decisions when you see your opponent in moving the checkers and what they're thinking and what they uh, and how they I, I often um, if I can see real doubt in somebody if it's getting towards a double I throw it just because I'm I can see this is a position they don't like at all you know I mean obviously not crazy but um, <coughs> well, that's you probably you how don't you get did. that information. And That's you how you get, get to three thousand using psychology <laughs> on guys. Yeah, but you don't. Yeah, I say you don't get that information off Galaxy that much. But you no kind of it. You've just got to rely on if they take a bit too long to play the move. Sure. And they bit yeah. Moving on to the five three. Okay. Wow. What else is that? You just leave a double shot there. Okay. That's the right play. I don't know that there's very many of us can do that. That's not a human play. It is. No, it, actually, I did think. But I, I didn't. I, I actually didn't see. I should have seen that. But I, the one I looked at was eighteen ten. Yep. But and what what how much of a blunder would that have been? Uh, going to the detail. It's probably the second best. Eighteen ten is a small, a small error. Yeah. Yeah. So it should have been one of those two. Yeah, and the thing is, you just you're giving a shot, but you're also opening it up so uh, he can get out. That's why yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying I would have seen this, but uh, no. looking at the analysis and seeing how clear it is in terms of the numbers, uh, yeah, exactly it makes sense. And now, Tim, I have a question. I can't see this on yeah. our screen, but did after your five three, does Boris have a cube here before he hits? I, I was I was uh, bothered about it. I would I, I would. It doesn't show a, a, an error, but it looks an easy cube to me. But based on the 
distribution. Yeah. 71% wins and 28% gammons <laughs> at this score. No, this has to be a cube for him, New York. I kind of thought so. And trailing 5 1. Oh, why, why is it not showing cube like, here? Not, why is it not show include? I don't know. There's something there. wrong. Yes. But, but I'd, like to, wow. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'd like to see XG's analysis of the two. You know of what? I, I yeah. think. For some reason, this wasn't analyzed, and that's why we can't hit cube. And if it was, I'm, I'm that could have swung the I mean, PR for score, the match. It, it, of course it's a double. At it's this score, double. I'm doubling this without even thinking about it. Wow, it didn't analyze this. And this actually that this could cost the PR for the match. You may have won the PR for the match. Yes. Yes, I think so. Wow. Even if, uh, even if you made the right play, though, it's it's a pretty good time to be sending over the cube. I'm, going the sorry, one thing, uh, I'm not moaning. One thing for sure be better than I deserve always, so I can't moan at this one. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, you know, the number of times I do, I uh, especially against players of about equal standard, that I've done better on Galaxy compared with XG analysis of them. Mm -hmm. But this is one that's, it looks like he's not been penalised, isn't it? Yep, there's no analysis. I'm guessing it's not even, it's, 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 that's so strange. Yeah, no, I'm Rory, just look, clicking. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty bad blunder to miss that double, isn't it? Yeah, but Rory, look at the look at the distribution. Forrest is winning seventy one percent here, and yeah. it's 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 forty percent gammons. This is obviously a cube, but not. Well, oh, hang on, hang on. Oh, is, no, is that not after the? No, sorry, is that after the hit? Oh, hang on. No, no, we've got it wrong. No, we've got it wrong before. So what, what's the position? Sorry. Say again. I can, I can, I, I'm, I'm not quite as comfortable on um, Galaxy as I'm on uh, XG. I, uh... Well, it shows that the, in the oh, position wait a second. Wait shows a... you're already on the queue. Yeah, that's yes, why. I'm sorry. That's why. <laughs> We're, we are we are incorrect. <laughs> you're absolutely right. Uh, that makes us all look pretty foolish, doesn't it? <laughs> a group of four experts here. <laughs> all right. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sure the people on the stream are like, wow, there are a bunch of idiots up there. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, oh, wow. Sorry. That's pretty funny. Let me see if I can edit that part of the video before it gets live because we have a five minute delay. Yeah, yeah we'll, edit, we'll, 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 edit, we'll edit that out. Yeah. <laughs> Ray, Chris, Rory, and Tim. <laughs> wow. Oh, the four clown, clownsmen. <laughs> Deep analysis. Okay. Uh, I think that's it for this game. Uh, yeah. yeah, we looked at the 5-3. So. Uh, going to the game where it's 3-5. Yeah. Uh, game 5. Uh, you played pretty clean, it looks like. Uh, there's a little 2-2 two -two towards the end. Uh, what should you do with this 2-2? Two, oh. two? Take one off? Yes, yeah, it wanted me to be more aggressive for the gammon. I took, yeah. Again, I took ages on that one. You you took a while on this? I, I, took, I, yes, I stepped I away. I, took, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't decide what to do. Gotcha. And then I just, it's .05, and then, then the double yeah. ones as well. I'm just guessing that... I'm trying not to look at it. I'm just looking at what would I do here. I think I would play four three and take two off. Yeah, and that's the play. And what do you? Oh, you just took one off from the back. I just cannot say that. I cannot say that. Well, if he fa well, he's gonna fan, and you're likely only taking one off the next roll. That's why going from even to odd, this roll is not that important. But actually taking two checkers off, followed by another checker on the next roll, which you're likely only to get one off, then you're odd. Does that make sense? It does, but the number of shots extra in return is huge. How many is it? It's all double three, four, five, and six. That's four for a, for a start. Plus four. two big numbers followed by two big numbers. Yeah. So that's... and I've gone and I've gone odd. I've uh, you know now I've gone to three off as well. No, 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 but the, but um, what I'm saying is, is three off this roll doesn't matter because quite often on the next roll you're only getting one off. Get one off. Yeah. That's why you, if you take two off this roll, then the next roll when you take one off, you got five yeah. off instead of four. Yeah. So. What game are we in? I'm not. I'm not convinced on that one yet. Yeah. Uh, well, it's. Yeah. I'm not a hundred percent, but I, I'm just saying, uh, thinking that that's the reasoning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Oh, no, I took edges. No, no, it was a 2-2 two -two that I took edges to play. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, skipping ahead to game six. There's a little 2-1. What is right here? What? No, that was... Um, oh, that's that his. Was... I apologize. You're 6-2. Yeah. yeah. Right after it. 6-2. 8-2-6-4. Yeah, it was a bit of an overplay with the... We talked about this for... Or they talked about this for a bit. Um, yeah. I think the natural play is to go to the two-point. But I actually liked your play. I absolutely yeah. liked your play. You make a four-point board, threaten a five... Uh, Threaten a yeah. four or five prime um, when you have an anchor and your opponent has a blot on this board. I mean, yeah, it was, it was sexy for sure. Yeah. Uh, no, well, you got you got to try and show off, Ray. Right? I, mean, yeah. I loved try, it, Tim. You got to, I, yeah, especially, especially when you know you're about to come to talk about a cube that doesn't exist for edges. You got to pretend you're a flash player when you're actually doing it. Yeah, I, I love ah. this play, and I'm I'm quite surprised yeah. it's wrong, actually. Chris, at the time, what did you think? Just curious. I don't recall. And what are you thinking now? Would you have made this play anyways? Or would you have Sorry, just Sorry, I lost the conversation. Which game are you on? Uh, game six. Um, uh, which game? Game six, six move, 13. move 13. This is when he made the four point and brought the six down. And I, I like I said, I love the play. I would make this play every day, twice on Tuesdays. <laughs> it looks nice for sure, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm making the four point with the two right away and then looking for the six. Um, I'm not sure I what I would have done it, but once he did it, I liked it. Yeah. It was kind of like the thing I, I probably, I might not have done it, but then when Tim made the play, it gave me the push to feel like it was right. right? Yeah. And I'll be honest, I actually think a lot of better players get this wrong and make the play that we like than maybe some lesser players because I think it's more natural to be a little, maybe be a little cautious and go to the two point. Um, where like I could see Mochi making this play all day, every day, um, and yeah, you know, it's just the kind of thing he does. Yeah. Well, it's a little bit intimidating to play someone who will just stick two blots out in front of your face, right? And then right. you see that, oh my God, I can't really risk hitting. You know, it's a, it's hard to play against guys like that. He's, and he's at run. he's at a four away score, so I mean, he hits and he doesn't cover. Might the cube be going back right, go, coming at me right then? You know, um, yeah. And yeah, what, I don't think what Boris do I do? is going to hit here. I don't think Boris is going to. I don't think Boris is going to hit here unless he can do it under very favorable circumstances, which is like the four one that he rolled. Or the four five, or maybe four three or five three. He's not going to hit with any two or six that doesn't make a point. Right. Yeah, that would be right? kind of so. I mean, it would be kind of suicide to do that. But anyway, yeah. I mean, it, I'm just saying that it was a little. It's a little bit unsettling to play against somebody who's got you down. He's standing on your throat, and then he's sticking blots in your face. So that's I know, a but I, I, great gamesmanship by Tim there. Yeah, I see that. Like but, that. I mean, there are situations where this becomes sort of awkward on the following roll because if Boris rolls a number like, uh, I don't know, like 5-3, no, if you if you made the other play, he'll bring the 5 down and cover the 3. And then if you roll an 8, you know, you would want to run because you're up in the race and you don't want to get into an anchor versus anchor game, but then you can't run because you've got these two blots. And it's hard to really clean this up effectively. And building an outside prime with the ace point already made is is sort of it's the best you could do in this position. But basically, Tim just wants to get home here because he's got a racing lead, not have this evolve into an anchor versus anchor position. So I, I see why it's judged to be okay. But I mean, it doesn't really sort of fit strategically with the position if you, if you sort of step back a second. I think. That was just interesting. Oh, 43 mistakes. I wish that was the biggest one I'm oh, I made. Agree. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not trying to be critical. I'm just saying it doesn't really yeah. threaten to accomplish anything you're looking to accomplish in the position. Gotcha. I'll tell you what, I don't really like Galaxy because I'm old and they only give you half as much time as you get at an ABT event with a clock. And yeah. so you really can't go to the bathroom or do whatever, and you're kind of forced to play fast. So you can't think through all these little details and stuff. No, like you, that. you definitely haven't time for that. You definitely haven't. 
you know. Um, hey, they Ray, should have a, um, hey, Ray, I didn't think of all that, so anytime you want to play a match for something, just <laughs> let me know, they buddy. They should have an option on Galaxy to pause the clock by mutual consent. I think yeah, that's yeah there should tomorrow. be. And I think, you know, the whatever. Anyway, I'll drink a gallon of water and we'll play for hundreds, okay? <laughs> Only? Game. Really? Why, why so? Why, why so little? Why do you want to play for such little stakes? I don't know. Whatever. I just want to make you happy, pumpkin. Thank you, dear. <laughs> you, you know what I think is interesting here? If you fast forward to roll thirty-one, okay. After Boris just hit you with the six-one, and you're on the roof, you actually had a double yeah. here. Oh, I know that was uh, the the roll before. I missed a double there. The six-five, yeah. yeah. Yeah, which I considered and then chose, yeah, and chose a against. But um, uh, all right. Uh, but the the next one is really interesting. I I just thought no, chat. I wasn't even close to doubling this one, which was even more of a double. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Well, at four points is a big deal. You yeah. know, that's pretty it's juicy. Pretty, yeah. But uh, I don't think any you know, guys yeah, that are looking stuck. At it now. Yeah. Are looking at uh, this and saying, all right, if he misses it, you know, I can send free whip. You know, these kind of things are in your mind when you're in a final, and it shouldn't be. I know that they shouldn't be. That they were in my mind, you know, trailing, and I thought, oh, I don't mind. I don't mind winning an undouble gammon here. Yeah, Tim. I mean, I, I would say I. I see I, it's, now. it's weak, you know. It's weak. Well, I have a question it's, about this. So I'm, a human, I'm not Ray. So I have a question about this four-two double. So if. It's saying this is a pretty big double. Uh, let me get to the actual yes, uh, awesome. let me uh, yeah. detail. Okay, so it's uh, cube. It's saying it's a wow. It's a one eighty, and that tends yeah. me to believe that if you double and fan, White might not even have a redouble at that point. He doesn't. He doesn't. You could go and look at it. Boris is only fifty two percent with six percent gamuts. However, the score indicates that he should be, you know, putting pressure. Nobody well, wants what, to see yeah. that cube coming back, and that's I, why look, we hold off on sending it in the first place. Exactly. I, think. I, I, I was Ray. I was just really when I didn't double. I was thinking, well, I've got an easy take to two, but a uh -huh. tough take to four. Uh -huh, should, right. I mean, yeah. you know. You know you're up seven to three. You don't want no four cubes. Thank yeah, you very yeah, much. Yeah. <laughs> well, you've got to do the right thing, and I didn't. I was right. Weak. I mean, you know, wouldn't it be great if we could all do the right thing yeah. at, at the right moment? But, you know, exactly. this is like, yeah, but you, blood you, and you nerves. Can, but you can see it. He's not, even close, he's not even close to a redouble after a fan. It was yeah. interesting because he did fan, and then Boris didn't even think about sending the cube. So he's not trying to put pressure on people. Now, I would have put pressure and got destroyed, but, uh, yeah. but we, anyway. I agree. So after the non-cube and the fan, you're right. It's a 51. Well, actually, does that mean it? Does that mean it's uh, what's the cube? Your double uh, yeah, double is a huge error. Double is a huge error here. Um, but if I have a question for well, you though, well, if, you can see if, the logic. Would this error be much smaller if the, he had sent the cube and then he fanned and then he didn't redouble? What What's the error on the redouble at that point? Oh yeah, well now you know it's got to be much now much smaller. You got less to lose and more to gain by yeah. this. Yeah, so, if I, if I'd have been Boris and I'd have fanned, I wouldn't even have come. If I'd have doubled. I, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't even have contemplated not redoubling to four. It wouldn't the, the 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 four cube would have been on the table in a flash, within quarter of a second. If it, <laughs> it, it would, yeah, it would beautiful, have been. interesting. That's it. That's if the, if the, if it was that's if it, if I had a doubled and then danced. Right, 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 right. Yeah, he's still got a long way to get home. I agree. I don't know. And he only has 20, was it 23 covers? 24 because yeah. double six is covers. Yeah. Uh, double well, six is a decent to... roll for white. But he's got, he's got, he's got absolute perfection in the gammons, doesn't he? Perfection, you know. And, right. pretty... and one of the things uh, that's sort of important to point out here is that I played Chris quite a few times in the last six months. And a couple of them, I was ahead 14 to nothing or whatever, and he came back and, and played some great backgammon, like in the twos both times, 
Well, yeah. he was coming back from 14 to nothing down. So it, he's just doing the right thing an awful lot. So pay attention when he tells you something. He don't have enough here. But yeah. against <laughs> some of the chickens we play against, yeah, yeah, yeah. we can send these kind of pressure cubes and you can reap some rewards. But you yeah. don't try it against Chris. Hey, Ray. Hey, hey Ray. I know. Hey, Ray. Yeah, yeah, meanwhile, meanwhile, I'm always available to commentate a lot at the end of matches. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ray. Yeah. Um, that's actually part of what you said. I'm going to annihilate just a little bit. It's kind of easy to play the cube when you're coming back from 14 to two. You're not going to make many cube errors, and against you, I mean, isn't that just a little bit easier, anyways? Well, if you were going to make a cube error down 14 to two, it might be that you double a little bit early because you're pissed off. But that doesn't <laughs> happen with Chris. <laughs> But okay. don't be sending over any sexy cubes against Tim <laughs> when you got a lead because he's going to fire some pressure on you, and he's the guy with a 3,000 rating, okay? Wow. And the 4,000 dice today, by the way. True. Uh, game seven's completely clean for you, sir. Actually, it's pretty clean for both okay. players. Can I ask you a question about can, can we go back sure. to game five? Oh. Game five at 3-5 and my first move. What did everybody think of my double two? Um, it looks like it was. Well, it's only I would a minor say if you led, you might lean towards making the anchor, but yeah, it's only a minute error to do that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, my default play is to make two points unless I find a yeah. really, really good reason not to. Um, so I wouldn't have made your play, but no. I mean, it, it's, it was with the lead, I, I suppose, even though it was only a two point lead. Yeah. yeah. It's it's not it's not bad. No, no. And the bigger your lead is, the more right it tends to become to make the anchor. Right. Yeah. And play a holding game. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right, right, hey guys, I, I, I got to uh, um, I got to run. Anyway, okay. what what did it what does it recommend as the best play? The two points, eleven and four. Yeah, eleven and four. The standard play. Yeah. Hey guys, I got to hey, run. Chris, it's been a pleasure. Off. Have a Thanks, good night, Chris. sir. Thank Thanks a lot, Chris. I appreciate you joining us. Uh, All right, I'll see you at the one. ranch on Tuesday. Yep, we'll see. We just got one last game to play. I'll see you, Chris. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, five four is the first one. Well, which uh, game, game are we eight? on now? Which game are we on now? Uh, the last Warriors? game, game eight. Game, game eight. Yeah. And I'm guessing slotting two points. Yeah. It wants you to be a little oh, more. Uh, yeah. oh. This is where I I am now. My head wasn't in the right place. I'm mm -hmm. I'm a bit embarrassed about that. That's a, that's just easy. Yeah, it's just a point oh four. But yeah, it is conceptually yeah, speaking. Well, you were down to point. two minutes yeah. or something by this time, right? Yeah, yeah, it was part. Of, yes, I was starting to rush a tiny bit. Okay. The next one is a six five. Oh, I went for it, didn't I? It wasn't correct. Bar four. And you should have hit. No, you hit and, you should, and bar 14 is right. Yeah. Huh. That's interesting. That's pretty small, though. Yeah. I don't mind the play. Oh, it's, it's, double it's, take. It's, it's bang on double take, isn't it? Yep. Double ones. That's a. It's an okay roll, I guess. Followed by a 5 3. I'll come in and hit. Yep. Okay. And then you have a 6 2 and move 35. Yeah. What is right here? 14 oh, six. Okay. Really? Coming into the six points, right? And nothing yeah. hits. And you safety one, huh? And there's yeah. zero hits. That's better than. Uh... Well, okay. but, yeah. but even his hits, I've got threes. I've got some return hits. Sure. And, yeah. uh, you know, you play that one, and then you're going to be leaving fly shots when he's got yeah. a five point board next turn, right? Exactly. Well, anyway, but obviously, yeah, I can see it's close. It's not, it's not massive, is it? That one? And that's it. Oh, 22, no big deal. All right. And that's it. Uh, congratulations, mm -hmm. Tim. Uh, oh, thank you very Sunny much. Florida. Thanks, sunny Florida, ABT yeah. online champion to go along with thank your, you L was it LA? 
Yeah, uh, LA, you want? It's, 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 it's backgammon's lovely when you start when you're rolling well, and it's and I'm just on a I'm, I'm on a couple of years. It's lovely. But yes. Like I say, I've been for three and four years without winning anything. I know what it's like, and whatever you do, it doesn't work. So gotcha. I appreciate I appreciate the good times like I'm having at the moment. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, well, that's great, man. How many points do you have now? How many points did I you get know. today? I, how I'm does I don't even know how the point system is. 